Hampton Roads has a long-running high school and college sports tradition. It's time to give them the spotlight they deserve. This is 757 Saturday Sports Talk. Here are Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young. Whatever. So this is, uh, you might hear this little guy right here. We text in uh, uh, the parking. You'll know who it is. It, uh, he, he just wanted a little screen time in case uh, there's any chicks out there that like him. That's why he wanted to come on. All right. So uh, we're going to be doing some uh, high school football previewing, mostly around the 757, but we'll sprinkle in some uh, teams and thoughts from around the state. Our top tens that are going to be finishing up this week on VirginiaPreps.com. I know people have been checking out the countdowns anxiously. Ed and, uh, in fact, tonight in Ohio, uh, part of the uh, triple header at the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame, the Dinwiddy Generals, who won the Class 4 state championship. Uh, believe it or not, Ed, they have, uh, they have a big matchup tonight against Glenville of Ohio, coached by Ted Ginn Sr. You remember his son, of course, Ted Ginn Jr., uh, played in the NFL, starred for the Ohio State. They are a loaded outfit, and it should be a will of a ball game. You know, just as Ted Ginn – Junior was one of the top, maybe one of the top, I'm going to just say 20 college players of all time in terms of excitement is what he could score in a lot of different ways. My partner here, Matt Hatfield, got a chance to talk to two of Dinwiddie's finest on the field football uh, players, uh, Harry Dalton and Savon McDowell. Let's check in and see what they think about the upcoming season. I am with a couple of Dinwoody Generals. We've got Harry Dalton, the state player of the year quarterback, uh, getting a ton of offers, and Savon McDowell, the linebacker, tight end extraordinary, who's committed to Coastal Carolina as the Generals reigning state champs in Class 4, getting ready for their big opener coming up in Ohio. Tonight, Harry, scrimmage against Oscar Smith. They're known as one of the best teams in the 757 in Virginia. It was a real smash-mouth type of defensive battle. I know you guys don't show a ton of your hand, if you will, for a scrimmage, but uh, give me what you think about the team right now as you try to uh, get another state championship this year. We're going to be fine. We just got to keep working on our kinks. The little stuff, it's not really the big stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just fine-tuning everything we got for real. 60 touchdowns, was it last year, something like that? Yeah. You like 500 yards in the state championship <laughs> game as a 10th grader. How did you do it converting from running back as a freshman to quarterback, and now you're getting all kinds of offers? Um, My whole life I've been a quarterback that ran the ball a lot. So my ninth grade year, Coach Mills told me that we were going to have Brent starting that quarterback, and I was fine with it. I just wanted to be good in the field. Mm -hmm. So – I just converted to running back that one year, did good. I got injured, but came back, played my hardest. Then the next year, Coach Mills told me I was going to be back at quarterback. It wasn't really too hard for me to come up off that. So, Savon, I'm on the sideline over there. I think it was before game situation, and it was a play. You made a, just an incredible tackle. Tell me what, what you think uh, enables you to be success, successful on the field, going both ways and being such a factor for this Dinwiddie team. Um, just – Playing for my teammates, man. I'll do anything for these boys. They need me to go to O-line. I'll go put my hand in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Just doing anything for us to win. Now, you made a commitment earlier this uh, summer to Coastal Carolina. I imagine the beach appealed to you. What was it about the Shanta Clears that you liked and made your decision? I went up there on an official visit and just felt like home. The players, the love from the players, the love from the community and the coaches. I knew I, I wanted to be a part of it, definitely, where I wanted to spend my Four years. Sure. Now you're an all-state caliber player, both sides of the ball. They like you at linebacker. What do they like about your game in total? What do they say, yeah, the sure. coaches? Uh, they run a 
blitz heavy offense and they see I can get to the quarterback uh pretty good and they just like their linebackers fast smart who can read and lead so mm -hmm. I fit perfectly to their defense I feel now in practice this guy's not allowed to tackle you right but you can throw it to him correct um I'm on the same side as um this year sure, so sure. I'm going to ask both of you guys, what makes Savon such a unique player? Then I'll ask you something about Harry. What do you think makes him such a unique player, both sides of the ball, for you guys? His mindset. He's a dog at heart. Mm -hmm. and, and it just shows. Mm -hmm. Like, you know he's going to play for his brother. So, it's just his all his effort goes into this field every every day. Mm -hmm. So, What sets Harry apart? His dependability, man. Mm -hmm. Every single game I ever played with him, I, I know if I get a stop, he's going to go over there, get that ball, and punch it in. Every single time, he's going to do what he got to do to help us out. So. I can always count on him every sure. single play. Come on for both of you guys. You got one of the best coaches in the state, Billy Mills. Tell us what Coach Mills, what makes him so uh, such a great leader of you guys. Man, he's, he's, if it's not perfect, it's not right. So he definitely teaches us. He built our mindset. We got to go out there, work hard every day, give our best every day, and that's just how we get better. Mm -hmm. He helps us as a team mm -hmm. to grow, be mm -hmm. perfect. Got to have a special relationship, Coach Quarterback. What's it like with Coach Mills? Coach Mills, he's a great coach. He's a coach for the football stuff and real life. He gets you ready for all of that. Mm -hmm. So – Coach Mills, he, he's a really good coach. It's special. Sure. Really special. Uh, last two for you guys. Uh, Recruiting-wise, you got a bunch of offers. Who, who are you liking right now? You're going to check out some schools. I imagine this is just going to continue to grow for you. Anybody that's kind of standing out or you like hearing from or want to go visit? Um, Alabama, of course. Okay. I want to go to Southern California to go visit down there. Right. Go see what they're talking about. Go back to Tennessee and Virginia Tech, of course. All right, so there's a few schools. Uh, lastly, for you guys, Savon, tell me about uh, the game coming up in Ohio. It's got to be a really cool opportunity to go play one of the best teams in the country and uh, show what you're made of, correct? Yes, sir. Game on national television. I thought our state championship last year. They hit us up, asked us if we wanted to play. And, of course, we down for the challenge. we excited to show what we could do. It's like having a championship game before the season gets – I mean, before you get going into your championship mode, correct? Yes, sir. Every time. I feel like this game next week is going to just set us up for the whole season. After this game, it will be a downhill slope for – the whole season, because that game is going to set us up for the whole season. A really. couple of fine young men for the Dinwiddie Generals, Savon McDowell and Harry Dalton. Thanks so much, guys. All the best. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you, guys. So you heard from uh, both Savon McDowell, Coastal Carolina commit, and Harry Dalton of Dinwiddie, who has a sophomore, Ed. Believe it or not, what a performance uh, he had in the state championship game when they beat Kettle Run, who was unbeaten last year at Liberty by a count of 65-20. to 20. Converted from running back to quarterback, 10 of 13, 245, three touchdown passes. Oh, by the way, ran for three touchdowns, 154 yards on 17 carries as Billy Mills' generals put up 50 points per game, a perfect 15 to 0. What makes it interesting is because you have three defending state champs now in different classifications. Riverheads moves up from class one to class two. You have Phoebus moving into Dinwiddie's class as two time defending state champs in class three now as a team in class four and you have Highland Springs, which you'll hear from later on also representing the Commonwealth of Virginia in an out of state showdown going from class five to class six, where they could very well be on a collision course with a freedom out of Woodbridge. But we've seen teams from Virginia, Oscar Smith leaps to mind for us and Tyler that have played out of state competition, big showcase events. I mean, for many, many, many years, the Tigers did that. It was the Norman to Rich Morgan. Dimwitty, this is a really big chance for them that will set them up for that ride again and potentially a showdown with, say, Phoebus that we are all probably anticipating come early December, even though it's just now late August. Yeah, I think in terms of teams moving up, you're talking about state champions. So obviously they're not going to defend their title in the previous classification there because not anymore. But as long as they've got the right amount of returnees, the right amount of key guys, uh, head coach is still in charge, there'll be a factor in the new classification that they're in. Um, Phoebus is a team, I always say every year, until they lose, I'm picking them to win, which is kind of a kind of stupid statement to make. But that's just the way it is. I know it's a new classification, and there are tough teams in, in each classification as, as those teams have moved up. But I look for them to do it. Now, Dinwiddie's playing in, you know, a team on a national level. Um, but, but again, Dinwiddie is a very great Virginia team. Maybe doesn't have that top 25 national level yet, but win a game like they would tonight, then who, who knows what can do. And it's always kind of neat to see our, see our teams out of our local areas, extend all the way to 804, whatever, play teams from out of state, see that the game is at the very least regionally televised on a, maybe one of the ESPN networks or whatever is tremendous, tremendous exposure for, for those youngsters to get into that. And it's a game that, you know, probably they'll remember the rest of their life above maybe all the games, unless they made a 
great play in another particular game. So it's kind of neat to see him get that notoriety. As you see on the screen there, we've got coming up our district by district picks across the 757 for the Beach District, the Eastern District, the Southeastern, the Peninsula, the Bay Rivers, as Ed and I will give you our players of the year and our top four finishes. You'll hear from some more coaches, even a couple of players as well, as we give you our preview across the uh, 757 and beyond. You're ready for some football, aren't you, Ed? Because uh, your Yankees aren't doing too hot and you got to focus on something else. Oh, my God. The Yankees, they're on a roll. They're on a roll straight downhill. They're on a roll maybe to contend with the A's. And and uh, the Nationals is two of the worst, uh, three of the worst teams in baseball record-wise. It's just a total disaster what happened to the Yankees. And, you know, yeah, I was on board earlier in the year about some injuries, key injuries. Bottom line is you got professionals being paid some decent money. Though I will say this, and I think I said this earlier before the spring started. When you look at the Yankees, they have three or four really good players. The rest of those jokers are a lot of fill-in, where they come from, definitely don't have one of the better lineups in, in baseball. They're really in the middle of the pack, but I'll be oh, honest. You, you don't trust the board of that, and you don't trust uh, IKF, Isaiah kiner falefa and some of these guys to help how, out Aaron how about Billy, How about Billy McKinney, Billy Greg McKinney. Allen? Like now. What are you talking okay. about? Ben Rovinet, Rovinet or whatever. I, I thought it was word of that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, guys, guys <laughs> like, um, you know, the dude that they picked up from the A's, the pitcher, Morales, whatever happened to him, they signed Rodon. You don't even know when he's pitching. He doesn't yeah, do anything. Middleton, the reliever from the White Sox has been serviceable for them in that bullpen. They had yeah, last week, uh, but you have like a six run lead in the ninth and, and spit it up. It's just, you know, you got to go find what's the Yankee fan that gets on there on, on YouTube and he goes berserk. Are you thinking of, are you thinking of, well, it's on social media, Nick Tuturo. He's the actor. Nick Tuturo. Yeah. yeah I'm with that. Nick because I want to scream and, and, and. Yeah. He says some choice food we can't say on, on the, uh, on the podcast. Yeah. yeah we really, yeah. We don't want to use, quite use that language that he has, but yeah, it's, it's, they're pathetic. I mean, there's no other way to look at it. The Yankees are rolling. pathetic, but I'm not jumping ship. It's still going to be my squad. Don't know how much better they're going to be next year. Uh, gonna, they need to definitely make changes, whether Aaron Boone is back, Brian Cashman, the GM. Are gonna you, be can, some you can jump on a lot of bandwagons. The, the Cubbies, the Orioles, there's a lot of teams out there you can jump on their bandwagons. I, 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 the Braves and know, Dodgers, I'm sure. On. Orioles is probably my second best team because I've gone to their games. Of course, when they're playing the Yankees, I sit in the Yankee section. But I've liked the Orioles, especially with these young kids coming. So, I, And right now, I'm rooting hard for a Oriole Brave World Series. Uh, those are the two things I'd like to see in the World Series. Hey, you'll see on the little bottom ticker, we've got some of the matchups coming up across the 757 for high school football. You'll see our VA Preps class, 654, and one top 10s coming up as well. And uh, we'll do our Players of the Year picks in a little bit. I've been out at some scrimmages, so you'll hear from some of those coaches at recent scrimmages, off-season camps, and so forth. Many of them are delighted about us doing the podcast. I uh, ran into uh, Jessica Bowman, uh, act, student activities quarter at coordinator at Cox. Uh, shout out to her. They always take care of me at Cox. You know who her dad is, the great Larry Bowman, who's a big time Dodgers fan. I uh, ran into some people at Western Branch Norcom on Friday night. They're excited about the podcast. So we'll give love to the Bruins and the Greyhounds coming up with both of their coaches. Uh, so all kinds of people. And we'll have a chance for you to interact with us on our Twitter page. You'll see that scrolling across the bottom line as well. The mailbag where you can send in regular questions and then beginning probably as soon as next week, once the first set of games are in the books, Ed, we'll have people able to call us as we go uh, live for these shows, not just recording, so people can actually talk to us, uh, I guess you could say in the flesh. Is that the right way of saying it, in the flesh? In the voice. Oh, in the voice, okay. In the well. voice. You got to get the podcast lingo right. I've been reading up on it, trying to be straight, and we're excited <laughs> about having all those loyal listeners that we, we found out we had, which we knew, but really found out we had once the uh, fiasco off the radio. But um, get them to, to, to uh, call in is going to be tremendous. We got to okay. find our buddy, Keith. He'll, he'll dial in. Don't worry. Hey, we've got a lot to go over with. We'll come back with our Beach District preview. But first, let's hear from a couple of the sponsors, beginning with Zoop Eatery and Chicho's Pizza, two places that Ed has not been to yet, but they're on his to-do list. Let's hear she from chose. Zoop right now.
quarterback to Matthew Hetfield and that evil basketball coach. Blast you, Ed Young! See, you're an evil basketball coach. Yeah, my buddy Stewie, I think that's someone around here in the house somewhere around here. Why you going around your house? You going to dog? That's yeah, scary. I would, yeah, I got I got the dog on the lookout for him, so uh it'd be great. We haven't heard from Stewie in a while. It's good to hear that that piece again. All right, back but, with the hey, those commercials, man. With. And commercials, man. I'm hungry for pizza and I want to wash it down with some soup already. Okay, and get you some water too. Get anything you want, liquids, soup, pizza. We've got all great items for you and we're going to ha- hear from some more of our sponsors but right now ed it's time to go through our beach district uh top four players of the year as well as uh we'll flash back up on the screen for you on the ticker there the uh beach district matchups coming up on thursday august 24th you see ocean lakes is at lancetown to kick things off bayside at salem green run at kempsville that's a big showdown as it's been the last couple years in the region 5a championship game princess Anne is at cox kellum is at first colonial a bit of a backyard rivalry game that is, but uh, do you want to go first with the top four picks or your players of the years in the beach offensively, defensively, where it figures to be, uh, I think, the the obvious choice when it comes to player of the year. You start with the uh, number one ranked player in the area and by many in the state, the flashy wide receiver committed to Virginia Tech, and we're talking about Keelan Brody Adams of Green Run. Um, I'm going to let me do some things here on my computer real quick get my names in front of me so that um, I'm not le- left in the dust. Let's go to team. The one that bites the dust. That was a great yeah. song. Let's Which we can't that, play because I, like I believe that. that's copyrighted too. Go ahead. I like that one. We uh, we got we got to get permission. We need to hire our music director so he can find out what's legal, what's not, and give us some really good, I used to call it bumper music, intro music, and sound effect music. He needs to get all that. So we're looking for a young intern who's into that kind of stuff, and we'll get him going. Uh, let's let's look at top teams throughout the, the districts. Well, uh, for me, it's pretty cut and dry. Green runs at the top. I don't believe Kempsville is going to be quite as strong. I know you say, oh, you got a great allegiance to Kempsville. What are you talking about, Matt? Walk those hallways many, many years. Uh, well, that is true, but I'm not going to put them to – I'm going to go Lancetown 2, Salem 3, and i actually go with a tie for 4. I'm allowed to do this. I'll go Kempsville and Cox tied for 4. Uh, I don't think they'll get off to a great start. They do have some good returnees with Riley McIntosh, the uh, Marshall commit, Deacon Rawls in the trenches, who's headed to James Madison. You have to break a new quarterback. They lose a lot of seniors led by Naquan Washington-Pierce and uh, Karan Boyd, who's now playing at Duke, but I feel like this is Green Run's district to take pretty easily. I think Robert Jackson's going to make a move up. Veteran coach at Lansdowne, who's got more playoff victories than any coach in that district. I think a, a Kellum and a Cox could be pesky and surprise. Watch out for Gerard Johnson on defense for the Falcons as they break in a new head coach in Tyler Noe, a longtime assistant. Gerard's a Virginia Tech commit. And then you can't count out some schools like a Bayside or Tallwood that can bite you when you're not looking. So uh, I feel like the beach has got a lot of parity after the top team in Green Run, who it feels like this is, you know, they're, they want to get one more shot at perhaps Maury in the state semis who's knocked them out the last two years as they want to keep those prolific offenses going and making a march towards December and a chance to get to Old Dominion. Well, I'm going to stick with you on green run number one, head and shoulders above, <coughs> excuse me, above everybody. I'm going to twist it on number two. I'm going to move Salem Sun Devils up. Slight edge over Lansdowne. Okay. Yeah, and I'll stay with Cox at for with with people like Kemsville, Kellum, um, I, I put them right in there. I'm not quite sure or where to go from there, but I like Salem as the move up team. And you know, I'm gonna just say this to Green Run. I, I think you have the best athletes right now, but be careful Friday each Friday night, Lansdowne, Salem, and even up somebody like Cox, um, you're not going undefeated in that district. Well, it will be hard to do. Uh, they've done it the last two years, and they have not had an overtime game or really even a last-second heart stopper, although Kempsville's given them some battles. That's maybe their toughest game you see in the district until uh, they do see Salem in October. So we'll see if 
uh, the stands do get pushed by somebody in the district. Now, give us your offensive, defensive player of the year. I kind of went first with Brody Adams of Green Run, uh, so I stole him from you to go first on, on that. You want to go with uh, the quarterback, Scooter, from Salem, Jason Williams. He's a logical choice, a junior who can put up some big numbers, Ed. You can go a lot of different directions. Raleigh McIntosh, who I mentioned from Kempsville. A breakout name could be Halim Hardnett from Bayside uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Or you could defer a little bit here and go to the defense because there's a lot of good defensive guys to choose from. Well, you stole my, probably my offensive player of the year. So I've got to try to decide here, defensive player of the year, see if I can steal your pick. Um, I'm looking at, oh boy, the D back from Green Run, Milton Ferguson. Okay. I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards him. I, I tell you what, there's a lot of guys that defensively, uh, you know, the Murphy guy from Salem, nine interceptions last year, three return for scores. Um, a guy that can do it, Cox defensive lineman, Gerald, Gerard Johnson, uh, Virginia Tech commit, in on a lot of tackles, a lot of sacks. But I, I, I'm going to put it one. I, I think I'm going to stay Milt Ferguson, green run, um, defensive back. Well, I was not going to go with Milt, though I like his game and his teammate there, Caleb Turner. They could cancel each other out to a degree. I think uh, – Adam Murphy is where I'm going defensively for Salem, which I think will have a pretty strong defense. He had a lot of picks last year. I think he'll get more picks again this year. He and McIntosh will probably battle it out for the Beach District leading that. I think Gerard Johnson will be right there in the hunt. I do wonder about him going both ways, if, if there could be some wear and tear there on the tires. But I'll go with him on the uh, defensive side with Murphy there, uh, which I'm, I'm guessing then you'll take his teammate and Scooter Williams, the quarterback from Salem, as your offensive choice. Yeah, I, didn't, I did not pick my offensive choice because I did like Brody Adams. I, I, it's easy to go with a quarterback, especially somebody that's got good arm and is going to complete passes or they got good legs and, and can and, and get in the end zone with on their own. So I'll go with Scooter Williams over there at Salem because I think Salem is going to put up some good numbers this year. Yeah, I'll give you a sleeper too potentially is uh, Reginald Custolo, a uh, four-year starter from Tall, but he could be in the mixture for some of these awards coming up. So uh, you never know. I think that there could be a player that comes out of nowhere. There's not a really dominant, definite Beach District running back that's been a hallmark name like we've had in some other years. But let's hear from some of the coaches, Ed, that we've got in the Beach District. Uh, we've got Tallwood's John Keppel, Salem's Mark Hall, and uh, Kempsville's Daryl Cherry. And uh, that's a big game coming up, as we showed on the screen a little while ago, Kempsville Green Run. And uh, let's hear from Mr. Cherry, shall we not? Let's do that. All right, here it is now on the Hatfield and Young at the Plex through Hometown Sports Productions. Here's Coach Cherry from Kempsville. All right, here with Kempsville head football coach Daryl Cherry as he's one of the teams, his squad, the Chiefs, uh, among this gathering with the Lancetown team camp getting ready for the season. Coach, it has to be nice to have a bunch of different teams, and football's almost here. It's getting towards the end of July and uh, another season upon us. Yeah, it is. Um, it's a great opportunity to come out here, get some work in, and that's what it's about, getting some work, see what young guys you have, and building your roster from here. You certainly changed the culture at Kempsville from that long losing streak a couple years ago to making back-to-back -back region championship game appearances. A lot of seniors left, including Karan Boyd, Naquan Washington Pierce, to the next level. Tell me about just kind of the mood and getting those young guys about buying into, like, this is what we expect and playing the way those guys before them did. Well, I mean, of course, when you have uh, a bunch of seniors that graduate to change the culture and everything, now it's time for um, to, to trail a new path. So these guys got to figure out where they fit in, in the equation and go from there. Um, you know, right now, we you know, continue to work on grinding each day, getting better each day. We're not the same team as we were those, with those seniors, so we got to understand that. So that success is their success. Now we got to build and start over from scratch. I've heard championship coaches talk about it, like Lauren Johnson at Highland Springs, Mickey Thompson at Stonebridge, all across the state about when you, you change the culture at a program, you start winning, and you guys are certainly getting to that championship level, trying to bust through and win the you know region and get to the states, that those guys before them don't always realize that. Is that the biggest thing? Not so much, we know these kids have ability, but getting them to understand there's a way we do things, and it's not because the guys before you did it, you have to also do things the way they did it by putting in the hard work or yeah definitely um you know one of the biggest challenges now when you when you build something from from where um, being 0 and 63 it's all about the stability that's where mm -hmm. you get the alabamas those those um those national championship teams that's the hard part i mean to can repeat that success over and over and over again even when you have you know new guys coming in so that's one thing that we're ha we're learning now and mm -hmm. we have to understand that it, we have to grind we have to buy in we have to do the things you have to do the grunt work 
um, around the board, and that way we will continue that success. If you don't have that, then you start over from you know from the beginning. People know Kemsel's produced some next level guys. You've had Jalen White go to Old Dominion, Karan Boyd going to Duke. Uh, you have two already committed guys in Riley McIntosh, uh, I believe Marshall and Deacon Rawls, James Madison, offensive lineman, wide receiver, defensive back. Is it not a matter of just the abilities for them, but showing that senior leadership this coming year? And is that what you talk about with them? Or yeah, the biggest thing is senior leadership. Uh, we, had a lot, we had a lot of guys, a lot of seniors to graduate last year. This year we only have about six seniors, mm -hmm. so um, they have to understand that this is their team, this is their opportunity to lead and and push forward. So. Um, well, we're trying to get them to understand that, hey, now you can't sit back. It's your turn. So you have to be that vocal leader. You got to lead by example. So those are things that they also have to, 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 to take in consideration and actually do now yeah. versus last year somebody else had to do it. So now it's, that's, you know, that's, our, that's a learning process all around the board. Last to let you go, and thank you for your time. We still got a lot of time before the August practices and the real hot humidity comes here in that game one with Green Run. For you as a coach and your staff, as you all get ready for this, do you even know what your identity is going into this season? I mean, you have an idea of what some things are, but there's still a whole lot of work to be done between now and game one, correct? Oh, yeah, we got a lot of work. Um, you know, of course, we know we lost our player caller last year, so we got an opportunity for a couple of quarterbacks right now to fight for the position. Um, of course, you know, losing our running back. So we got a lot of people that's, that's, that has to you know, step up. So we got a good competition in our running backs with a young freshman coming in here with um, Tajay and with um, DJ. So um, we have the talent. We just got to build in that work ethic. And uh, just grind one day at a time. Talent, opportunity, enthusiasm, all, all there at Kempsville. Thank you so much. All the best. I appreciate it. So that was Daryl Cherry of the Kempsville Chiefs. Amazing. They lost more than 60 straight games when he got there. Now they're uh, coming off back-to-back -back trips to the regional final. Ed, is uh, Kempsville probably wishes Green Run was not the first game. The good thing is it's at home. They don't have to go over to Green Run, which they've gone through the last two years, including in the region championship for the playoffs. Uh, do have a freshman, as he mentioned, to go with Darius Johnson uh, to run the ball, have a new play caller. So uh, it is pretty remarkable how he's done it. And, you know, you say there's some holes to fill Yet, I'm not counting him out because he got it turned around when it was in a lot worse shape than it is now, that's for sure. Yeah, it's hard to believe that team went through years of not winning a game. And now they're they're a factor. It's still not top two, three uh, of that beach district. But I think they're in a position. Oh, they've been in the last two years now. Hold on. They've been second the last two years. You, you, just, you just think they're falling off now? or No, I don't. And I, I don't want to get all the Kensville people mad at me, but when I'm thinking yeah, beach football, right I'm throw eggs at you. Yeah, and especially since you spent what eight nine years there, no, kind of like one walking the halls, um, and and you did pretty good in lunch too, if I'm not mistaken. I think you had a B That's plus. Right. That's right, B plus. So I, I don't want to discourage all that either. But you know, I'm thinking uh, um, say a Green Run of Salem and Lansdown, but I, Kemsville playing Green Run first game. You know, you're playing the power so-called power team right off the bat. You win that, you got to you got to guard against a letdown now because kids, you know, 15, 16, 17 year old mind kids think mm -hmm. beat the best. So, you know, what are they going to do in those games two and three coming up? I totally disagree with that. Well, if you play the powerhouse team, if you play it, it's been my observation. When you play the best, supposedly best team on your schedule in the conference district, whatever, and beat them real early. A lot of times the kids will think, okay, we've beaten the best. Nobody else could be this good. And there's a mental letdown in games. True. Whereas, whereas the opposite, you play the best team supposedly, right off the bat, you lose to them. You gauge how how was the loss? Was it close? What did we do wrong? Was a mental mistake here or there? You clean that up, and then, and then you start thinking, well, look, really nobody – rest of the season should be as good as them. So now there's an uptick in, in emotion that, hey, we know what we can do now, and, boy, we'd love to get another shot at them later. Or, or of course, come playoffs, you're going to be playing teams pretty doggone good because you don't usually have poor teams in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, based on the system, sometimes you get those losing record teams, but they could be hot at the right time. Well, I get your philosophy on that, being a veteran coach, but what I would say is I think if they win that first game, which the opportunity, opportunity presents itself. And by the way, a name we didn't we totally left out for player of the year is Xavier Clark from Kempsville. A youngster, I believe he's only going to be a sophomore, didn't put up a bunch of major numbers, but he could have a real breakthrough year and be a 100-yard rushing receiving threat game by game for Kempsville and could be huge in their effort coming up in game one with Creed Run next week. But I would tell you, Ed, that if you win that first game, uh, I would say that it allows you to have a little bit of a swagger, a little bit of a 
belief. And now these young kids that haven't done what the last two teams have done, it takes some pressure off them that now people go in and they, then they see, it, all right, this team's for real a little bit. So I think there's you can look at it a couple different ways there. I don't think it's just as simply a, a tough uh, situation to recover from if you were to lose it or if you win it from bringing them down from cloud nine. I think there's there's another way to approach it a little bit. But let's go to another coach real quickly. We, we've touched on Kempsville. Uh, coach Cherry once was over at the school right down the road as part of the uh, part of the uh, rivalry between two schools that are maybe five minutes apart. And we are talking about uh, is that if I'm not mistaken, Tallwood. That is correct. All right, we're going to go to Tallwood. We're going to speak to where you got a chance to speak with John Keppel, head f- uh, football coach at Tallwood, and uh, get his perspective on his squad and maybe what the Beach District has to offer this year. <laughs> All right, here with Tallwood Head Football Coach John Keppel as the Lions are gearing up for the 2023 campaign, competing in this Lancetown Team Camp. Uh, Coach, you've done it for many, many years, Old Dominion, Ports with all these different places, but it's got to be nice here to be in the beach, not have to travel too far, and then also see some teams you won't play during the season as you prep for the campaign coming up. Right, definitely. It's nice to see somebody new. You know, know, it's exciting to see, you know, the beach teams getting together to put this on. This is an excellent opportunity for us. Uh, But, you know, obviously to get in there and work with somebody different, see somebody we're not going to see, just see some different stuff uh but it's a great working camp everybody's you know we're slowing things down when we need to uh but trying to get something out of it yeah i even mentioned to you uh back in may and june you your team showed a lot of promise catching the football in the seven on seven passing league. the coach niece runs at kellum does a nice job with that getting about a dozen teams out there that feels like even though you're known for being a physical team at all running the football the years of breon mosley gunner white something that could be a little bit of a nice plus to have these receivers that catch the ball and make some plays in space yeah definitely we've got some really good receivers coming back you know uh we were young last year we've been young for a couple of years. Uh, we've got some experience at quarterback uh, with, with both Rojas and Mittenall, a young, young kid in 10th grader, so we've got to have good quarterbacks there. So we've got some guys that can do some things in space. I'm pretty excited about whether they're playing. And when you have a versatile player who's going to be, I think, a four-year starter now in Reginald Custolo, it's got to be a luxury because you can line them up at different positions and it's a guessing game for the opposing defense or the opposing offense, correct? Yeah, absolutely. We can do a lot of things with him. He'll play some quarterback. He'll play running back. He's, he's, he's played some slot for us and receiver. Uh, but he'll do the same thing on defense. He'll play safety. He'll play linebacker. Uh, so we can do a lot of stuff based around his his abilities. Not the only young man getting some interest for the next level. I know he's got some some high grades, some smarts. Tell me about a couple of uh, in the trenches players that people should be keeping an eye out for. Yeah, Tavin Whitehead. Uh, he's worked real hard this off season. I mean, he's had an incredible uh, weight room opportunity. He's already got a couple offers in some D two schools. Uh, a lot of D one schools looking at him. I think he's kind of a wait and see guy for some of those guys. They just want to see what he can do. I think he's going to be one of those guys. Going to be really impressive uh, this year. Uh, Luke Beecham's another one that's getting a lot of looks. Big, big physical uh, tight end for us. Played some D line also for us. Uh, he had a great seven on seven, catching a lot of balls. So at six five, six six, able to catch about two seventy, can catch the ball, run and block. He's going to be able to do a lot of stuff. Come more for your appreciate your time. Were you as a head coach now, this is going to be what year for you at Tallwood? You've been here quite a long time, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's about it's been, yeah, 12, 13. It's going on a number of years, right? Yeah. So as head coach, I think I'm in that area of like, okay. right around twelve. Uh, but at Tallwood, I'm over 20. So when you go into these type of situations for your two preseason scrimmages in August, what are you looking for? A surprise player? What guys can and can't do? What's the biggest thing you and your staff sit down when it's all said and done and try to evaluate with it? We, we start with looking at our team. We like to look for those leaders, find those guys that are really going to be true leaders for us and, and really get those guys. We try to meet with those guys and, and get them to get the young guys and the other players involved. And then we're looking for guys, and uh, like everybody, looking for those playmakers to go out there and make plays but then trying to figure out what everybody's really good at, putting guys in the right position, the right spot, uh, so they can be successful, what obviously it turns out for us to be successful. And lastly, I know your best role is relishing being that underdog, flying under the radar and then bet- biting some teams, if you will, catching them off guard as that upset special, which you've done a number of times over the years. And you play, I think, the way your schedule is, it's Cork with the Beach two years in a row of the cycle. You play, I think, 10 in a row because you have that bye to begin yes, the year. Absolutely. Tell me about what's going to kind of determine the level of success you have as far as you look at the overview, kind of crystal balling it a little bit as far as offensively, defensively, what will matter if you're going to win X amount of games. Well, last year, last year having that bye the first week, we unfortunately lost a scrimmage, our second scrimmage. So we played August, I think it was maybe 10th, and then we didn't play Bayside until uh, until almost September. Okay. So we had a long stretch. What was their fourth 
fourth game was our second um, sure. count scrimmages. So, you know, we're looking for being able, you know, getting two good scrimmages in, having a good bye week, um, coming into the season a little bit better off. I think we're, you know, we were experienced at the line and at running back with, with Marquise and, and Coley last year. Uh, we're now we've got some of our skill guys, our quarterbacks. So I think that's going to change things that we're going to be able to do a little bit more earlier where last year we kind of had to wait and see to figure out what, what all those skill guys A little more balance, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, all the best to you in the lines, and hopefully we'll see that roar come uh, August. Thanks That's so much. Right. All right. Thanks. So that was John Keppel, head football coach of the Tallwood Lions. He's up for year 13. He's now the elder statesman in terms of uh, men that have been at the Beach District uh, at that school the longest, although Robert Jackson is the guy that's been doing it the longest. He was at Lan- he was actually at Bayside, then Lanstown, then Salem for many of those victories, 150-plus, went to Norcom, his alma mater, and now back in the beach for year two at Lanstown. But John Keppel there, Ed, as we look at this, Tallwood team getting those 10 straight games. It is kind of awkward that they don't get the bye week. I mean, their bye week is before the season. I know that happened a few years ago with Bayside. It's part of the cycle here, how it goes. But uh, 10 in a row for them, and we'll see how they uh, approach things because they're that team. I know years after year after year, we do these picks. We tend to forget about them, and they'll come out of nowhere and go 6-4 and four or 7-3. and three. Possibly that one year they went 8-2. and two. So uh, there's going to be somebody like that in the beach. Could it be Tallwood? It could be. It could be someone else among the 11 in the beach. Yeah, I mean – the teams that we don't mention is top two, three, four in the district doesn't mean they can't a win games, b knock off the teams that we're picking up ahead of them. Anything can happen on a given Friday night. Again, as these kids take the field and what what their feeling is, uh, you know, it's amazing. We we've talked so much about the beach, and we haven't made, mentioned the name Ocean Lakes. No, a few short years ago that when you talk local football seven five seven, Ocean Lakes was probably if not number one, your second no less than a third statement yeah. that you made about football. So it goes to show you how things can change over time. You know, there was once upon a time green run football way back in the day, probably your days of, of, of Kentsville was the powerhouse everybody talked about. And then some things changed in terms of residency over in green run, housing situations changed. And then for the longest time, green run, when I was there for basketball, went through a horrible situation where if I'm not mistaken they reached a 50 game straight losing streak and now yeah. they're kind of back so things do go in cycles sometimes the cycles are short and sometimes they're just long and drudgery yeah it was uh for a long time then Sean Wilson got to green run help turn that around Sean Wilson later went to Salem and speaking of Salem they have one of the young puppies if you will as far as the head coach you got some new coaches across the district I mentioned Tyler Noe at Cox Lamort Smith at first colonial Philip Sims. We watched him as a player sling touchdown passes at Oscar Smith went on to play at UV in Alabama. He's got his work cut out from at Prince of Sam, which is coming off a winless campaign, but the Salem Sun Devils Ed with a guy that once was a two sport standout at green run in both football and basketball before going on to the university of Virginia. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to talk with uh, their new head coach. And I remember him. He was a one heck of a running back. If I'm not mistaken. No, he's All right. he's close enough. Yeah, we go with uh, Mark Hall. Yeah. Here it is, Coach Hall of the Sun Devils. All right, here with Salem Head football coach Mark Hall as his Sun Devils among the scattering of teams here getting ready for the season for 2023. Coach, it's almost here. The dead period's over. It's July. It's hot, humid, but good teamwork here against a lot of teams you won't see during the season in the beach. Uh, It's got to be a nice building camaraderie thing for your guys, correct? Absolutely. Um, Like I said, man, this is a great opportunity for us to come out here. Um, you know, Coach Jack, you know, legend in this area, you know, gave us the opportunity for a good price to come out here with like 11 teams and, you know, get our shuttle pads and helmets on early um, and work hard against each other, you know, keep each other safe. But just, you know, coach us up. Coach us up. One of the things he said in the meeting, uh, coaches me, and that he wanted us to, you know, actually get in there and actually coach guys up. And, you know, if we need to stop plays and, you know, uh, run another play and see what we need to do. Um, you get us the opportunity to do that. Sure, and you got officials out here. So Lance Town running a nice little camp for the kids and uh, coaches and teams to get ready for the season. For you now, going into your first full season as head coach, you got thrust <laughs> into an interim situation last year. We know about what a decorated all Tidewater athlete you were in multiple sports, football and basketball, green run before your college career at UVA. How's the adjustment going? I mean, really, it's not a big adjustment because these kids know you, correct? Yeah, um, like I said, I know a lot of these kids since middle school. Um, I was already on the staff, so, you know, it was a kind of an easy adjustment. Um, I think the, the biggest thing was the off-season preparation and what it looked like when, you know, when the college coaches came in and visiting kids. Um, also, um, creating the off-season program, getting a strength and conditioning uh, coach. You know, we got Coach Tanner Hughes. He's done a, a great job 
uh, preparing our guys. Um, you know, their muscle mass is getting huge. Um, we got a very, very young team, though. Um, so it's new to us, um, So, but it's going to be fun. We'll have a really, really good season, and, you know, I'm looking forward to the season with the um, Sun Devils. Well, even though it's a young team, you have a couple of known commodities in your quarterback, Jason Scooter-Williams, who throws the ball as pretty as anybody out here as far as the deep ball. I had a nice touchdown I saw as this camp was ending on the first night here. And then your offensive lineman is a massive human being with a lot of potential in uh, Jalen Gilchrist. Tell me about those two and just their leadership and overall abilities plus potential. Um, very, you know, two great uh, players, man. Um, you know, I've been blessed to have those uh, two players, both of them class of 2025, um, Jalen being one of the um, best tackles in the nation. Um, you know, he's a humble kid and he's ready to work, man. Um, very, very uh, nasty out there, but just a gentle giant outside, outside of the uh, field. But, could, he block, could he block Mark Hall in his prime? I don't I, know, though. I don't know, man. We always talk about <laughs> that. I told him uh, his senior year I put some shoulder pads on and, okay. you know, we'll go against each other. Um, obviously, keep him safe, but, you know, he, you know, all these kids always want to go against their, their uh, coaches um, if I still got it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, Jason also, man, he's you know he's a great player, man. Um, right now he's very very overlooked, but you know he'll get some some very uh, good interest in the, in the future. Um, I think me personally, he's one of the better quarterbacks in this area. Um, like I said, he can throw the ball pretty, um, and you know he's been a starting quarterback for four years, so mm -hmm. he's a rising junior. Um, and you know, as you get older, the better you get. And I'm looking forward to having him um, control the offense. Yeah, I agree with that. I think he is sort of overlooked and underrated, even in an offense where he put up a lot of big numbers, headed up by your your OC there. Mike Mike Alston, former Senate receiver himself at Ocean Lakes. A couple more for you. Give me a couple maybe sleeper names. We know about Gilchrist. We know about Scooter Williams. I know you have some other pieces, including a defensive back who's going to be a rising senior that was an all-beach guy, a lot of interceptions last year, correct? Yeah, we have um, Adam Murphy. Um, he's going to wear number one for us this year. Um, very, very uh, great kid, man. Had, I believe, nine interceptions, led to area interceptions. Um, quietly, too, right? Yeah, quietly, yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, it was overlooked, and he's um, he's excited to be back there and to can, um, call the defense. On top of that, you know, we have Zachary Rogers, number three on our, our running back. Um, another really, really great player, um, rising senior. Um, looking forward to having him. Had a really, really great year. Split carries last year, but this year um, he'll be taking majority of the carries. And also Fabian Wells. Mm -hmm. um, Fabian Wells is uh, class of 2025. Uh, Rover safety um, comes downhill. Um, made a couple crazy hits today. Yeah. Um, you know, just throws itself out there and is ready, not scared to hit anybody. And, you know, we got one more rising senior. Um, Caden Davis. Okay. Um, he's the one that Scooter connected with in the end zone, the back of the end zone. Um, smooth player, um, 6'2", and, you know, just a big wise man, a, a wingspan. I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to having him, man. And lastly, and appreciate your time, but what should we expect out of the Sun Devils as far as identity? We know about the years under Coach Jackson many years ago with mm -hmm. Kevin Whaley, Lindell Gibson being a fast, physical, ferocious, aggressive team mm -hmm. that runs the ball. What should we expect in, in, in this Beach District where we know Green Run's been the top dog the last couple of years, but I know you want to challenge and be one of those teams that can make noise as you gear up for your opener at the end of August against Bayside, correct? Yes. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Green Run right now is the front runners, but like I said, man, um, we're taking one game at a time, and we're looking forward to playing Bayside. Um, one game at a time, um, and you know our goal is to go one to zero every single um, week. And as long as we take care of business, that's our goal. So you know, depending on how we do each week, is how we're going to end our season. Dad taught you well. No bulletin board material for the teams out there. Mark Hall, the Salem Sun Devils. Thank you so much, and we'll see you come August. Thank you. And for those who don't know, his dad is Cape Henry basketball coach Mark Hall. His brother, Devin Hall, a basketball player that started at Cape Henry UVA, then also got drafted by the Oklahoma City Thunder, plays professionally overseas. But, Ed, I like the vibe of the youngster as a coach. Only, I think, 29 years of age. He's got a quarterback in Jason Scooter Williams, who you picked for player year that Penn is already recruiting from the Ivy League as a junior. And then you have a junior offensive lineman in Jalen Gilchrist, 6'5", 315. Although they had some key transfers depart their program and are running back to Indian River, a stud defensive end. Namori and a wide receiver edge player that's going to be, you know, at nearby rival Green Run. This Jalen Gilchrist kid is one of the best linemen around, and you can you can build a good football team with a lineman that gets it done and road grades people. Well, again, my um, limited expertise in football always says line play. Uh, you got to have line play, especially in the offense. You got to be able to open up holes. Yeah, you got to give the quarterback time to throw. Um, you don't have to block long, but enough to get, I hope, open a hole and that quarterback can read the different different styles of defenses, coverages. And and then, of course, on the defensive line, you've got to, you've got to have a rush. You've got to do the opposite. You've got to knock those linemen down, make sure they don't have time um, to open up the holes or, or protect the quarterback. But Mark Hall, I look at that youngster, a kid looks like he can still play. I mean, he doesn't even have peach fuzz on the chin. He's soft-spoken. Um, he don't get that from his dad, I don't think. 
Um, I know Mark Hall, can, Mark Hall Sr. can get pretty feisty on a basketball court. But um, I think there's enough. You know, you, you can't worry about the kids who leave. Every year you're going to lose kids in terms of seniors graduating. Now it's a, it's a known fact. You're going to lose a kid or two or three on transferring. You know, you, you hate it when you lose your better kid because you build around them. But it's just an opportunity for somebody else to step up. And, and as one of the coaches said, that's what they got to do now. The roles change the, the following year. They've got to step up. And then you find some young kids that can uh, g- learn quickly, grow quickly, and, and fill in where you need those holes filled in. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a time out and hear from a couple more of our sponsors. It is Hatfield and Young uh, virtually, not in the Plex, but with the people at the Virginia Beach Sports Plex hometown sports productions. Big thank to big thanks to uh, Chuck, Nick, Dennis and the whole crew over there for making it possible. We'll come back with the Eastern District, those scores, uh, those schools from Norfolk and Portsmouth, how things going to shake out for them. But let's hear from one of our sponsors right now, and that would be John's Tax Service. Here you go. Well, it's everybody's favorite time of year again. Time to prepare to make your annual donation to that infernal revenue service. So get off your W-2 and call John Maynard at John's Tax Service. 455-6763. DQ put fries and onion rings in a chicken strip basket? Did you know this? Oh, of course you did. It's sitting right in front of you. Sorry. I mean, you got fries and onion rings together. Is this for real? Hey, baby, wait. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just got really real. Grab a chicken strip and fry rings basket. Okay, just one. Just one. DQ, happy tastes good. Get it delivered at DQ.com. Hampton Roads has a long-running high school and college sports tradition. It's time to give them the spotlight they deserve. This is 757 Sports Talk. Here are Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young. All right, we're back here at Eastern District time now, Ed, as we go through the teams across Norfolk and Portsmouth. But before we do all that, you know, everybody's got their list of the best players around. We talked about Keelan Brody Adams is sort of viewed as the, the king of the beach, if you will. He's got ridiculous stats the last couple of years as far as his numbers in the beach go with 55 grabs for 1,064 yards and 16 touchdowns, 42 catches for 1,009 yards, 16 touchdowns as a 10th grader. And one of the guys that's had to cover him in these state playoffs the last couple of years, well, he's with the Maury Commodores who have won, I think, what, five or six straight region titles in a row, but they're trying to get that state championship that's eluded them the last couple of years. They won it back in 2019 with that group with Keandre Lambert, Deshaun Peel, C.J. Be- CJ Beasley, and Ty Granger and company. But uh, the last two years, heartbroken against Highland Springs in Stonebridge. Could the third time be the charm for them? Yeah, we're going to find out um, quick enough. Uh, they are going to be one of the top teams, but without doubt in the state, Maury has even picked up some uh, highlight players from uh, other programs. But you have the opportunity to talk with uh, their outstanding youngster. He is a Duke commit, um, uh, an absolute terror on the uh, football field, and that is Devontae Floyd. Let's see what Devontae has to say about this upcoming season. All right, here with Maury, class of 2024 defensive back, all-state first team on uh, both sides of the ball this past year in two straight years as defensive back. Devontae Floyd has made his commitment to play as college football in the ACC at Duke. All right, Devontae, uh, you've been going to be a four-year starter for the Commodores. You just made your pledge to Duke to join your old Maury teammate, Peyton Jones. Tell me about what, what it was about the Blue Devils that set them apart for you. I like that how they, I like how they did everything. Like Everything they did was together, where, whether it was going out to eat, or like playing a board game or watching watching a movie. Everything was together. Everything was a family. And it made me feel like it was home. So 
that's where the decision came from. How much did it help knowing that Peyton's already down there and is probably giving you a good report about things, right? So with Peyton being down there and me asking him questions and learning from him, obviously, it just made me realize that it was like a, be a better pl a better place to be for me, mm -hmm. especially for my future too. What is it uh, the staff likes about you as a defensive bat? Because it feels like, okay, you don't have the gloss. You have good stats, but the not the glossiest of stats. Or maybe you guys have more INTs, but it feels like you shut down people on the outside and you take pride in that. Yes, sir. So the coaches like that I'm versatile and that I can play high and low, whether it's the nickel, free, or, or corner. Okay. So they feel like you can play any spot in the secondary, which is a big deal for you. Yes, sir. Um, Growing up, did you have some defensive backs that you kind of studied and, and you kind of emulated on the on the field as far as watching some tips and tricks, if you will? Or right now, I like Derek Stanley. Do you? What about Stanley? You like? I like how you. I like he's fast and he's like he's not the biggest guy, but he 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 locks guys down. How much being a part of this Moy program, where you guys have gone to state champs for the last couple of years, routinely winning region championships and going deep into playoffs, has helped you? Because I know there's kind of a lot of a lot of receivers have come through here, as far as guys like DeAndre Lambert going back to those days when you were probably either an eighth grader or ninth grader, if you will. What's that? How much has that helped you as far as your development? Well, obviously he's uh, played a big role in this, and he's influenced a lot of guys, and he also teaches a lot of guys. We learn from him, we look up to him, and guys like Peyton too. So that's how. It as far as the recruiting process, was it easy, stressful for you? Are you glad it's over? And, and who else was in the picture besides you? It was a long, stressful process, but it was a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I would say ODU, ODU played a big role in my uh, in my recruiting process. Okay. And I would say... And you had about 20, 25 offers? 29. 29, wow, that's a lot, yeah. So you had a lot of places you could choose from. A couple more lets you run here. Um, tell me about... Uh, Certainly, for you this coming year, more. I know you guys have got unfinished business on the mindset as far as getting that state championship ring. And how close do you think you guys are to that? Because it feels like you guys are a couple plays away and a couple of injuries away. If not happy, you might have won it last year. Yes, sir. Um, right now, I think we got a good squad and we're trying to get it done. Sure. But we just we focus on day by day. What are you working on in your game? Because you've already committed now. It's easy to sit kind of wrestling a little and saying, all right, I'm going to do. But I'm sure that's not how Coach McCain and everybody wants you to attack the process and want to go out with a bang, right? So, so now what I work on is I, I pick the things out that I need to work on the most, like my flaws, and I work on those things. Mm -hmm. How much do you feel like the Duke committee from Flitch run? Uh, Zon Burden on the staff. I know he, Zon Burden, Coach Burden being on there. How much did he play a role in your in your I know he recruits a lot of 7x7 seven seven guys. Right? Yes, sir. Because Zon played a big role. He committed me. He treated me well. And he always just showed love, so that, that was a big thing. Lastly, what should people look for out of Devontae Floyd's game that we haven't noticed before? Because it feels like now as a, as a four-year guy, both sides of the ball, you're just really confident and comfortable in your role and what you bring to the football field. What do you think we should watch yes, out for this coming year? From Progress, that's all, and a dog. All right, good deal. Yes, sir. And, uh so that was Maury's Devontae Floyd as he spoke about uh, his commitment to Duke. His teammate Peyton Jones went there last year. Ed, running back, how do the Commodores replace him? Well, they just bring up some new players from JV, some other players that walk, walked into their school, uh, one of which was at Greenrun and Damari Palmer, one of which was at Churchland and Leon Clark. Oh, by the way, they got the big stud pass rusher in Ari Watford from uh, Salem. They got uh, Jaden Ratliff, a safety from Norcom, who's committed to William & Mary. Defensive edge player Fred Johnson's committed to South Carolina. This team has upwards, by my count, of 14 Division I FBS or FCS recruits on its roster. Dereef McCain has a powerhouse program. And by the way, you mentioned board games. What's your favorite board game? You got a favorite one? Monopoly? You got something else? Don't tell me. You don't. You can't count Twister as a board game. That didn't work. Don't even go. I know you were going there. I knew it. Don't even go there. You can only play Twister with certain people. I know, and, and oh, I don't wait. want I don't, your mind is dirty. I don't want you to go. No, I, I took a shower this morning and washed my hair and everything's yeah. cool. My I mind mean, ain't dirty. I knew you were thinking Twister. I could read your dirty mind over there. Twister's a fun game. I haven't done that in a long, sure. long time, long time. <laughs> well, I, you, um, know. you know, I, board game, I, I'm a big, it's kind of not an unknown fact. I love board games. Um, Scrabble? You just don't hear about them anymore because everybody's playing the, the, um, the, the handheld stuff and all that, the, the new age games and whatever, Sega Genesis, whatever else is out there. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, I don't, I play Monopoly, but, you know, I get bored with it at times because I, I want all the good properties. Mm -hmm. uh, Doesn't work that way. I, I remember little, I used to love the game. It's so simple. Trouble. Oh, the, you got into a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. Operation where you got to make sure you have a steady oh. hand to pick out the bones. Um, oh man, those are some really old kid games, man. That goes way back. 
um, to that. So, uh, but I haven't done it in a while and uh, wish that was something that would come back. And, uh, you know, used to be with family, you get a couple pizzas and get some drinks and you sit around, you play some board games and talk. I, I don't think that's really done much by families anymore or friends even uh, for that most point, but that'd be a fun thing to do. It would be. Well, I think we have two teams that are very capable of winning a state championship in the Eastern District. We can go through our top four picks, our offensive and defensive players of the year. Uh, we can go a lot of different directions here, and we also have a clip we'll hear from with Norcom's uh, coach, Anthony Hawkins, in a moment. But where do you want to start here, Ed, as we uh, decompress a little bit from uh, the thoughts of Devontae Floyd, a four-year starter. He's going to Duke, bright young man, talented athlete, plays wide receiver, defensive back. He's certainly in our conversation for player to on either side of the ball. Uh, what what uh, floats your boat here on the Eastern no. District? Well, let, let's let's uh, let's look at the uh, <clears throat> let's look at the standings of where we want to pick them. Um, I think I go first this time. Um, yeah, you go first. I, I'm going with uh, Maury. You, when you just said 14, 15 Division One type players, I, I'm going with that. But that name behind them is another one. Every year I pick them to go undefeated, and and believe it until somebody knocks them off. And that's, of course, Lake Taylor Titans under uh, head, longtime head coach, successful head coach, Hank Sawyer. And, and we do give a little nod out to Hank. I know he's going through a tough time right now. Uh, unfortunately, lost his mom uh, yes. a few days back. So uh, that's very hard. And if I'm not mistaken, you gave me the news a few weeks before that. They lost an assistant coach. They did. Coach Ford, Theo Ford, a longtime assistant, a really good friend of Hank Sawyer's and just a class guy, um, unexpectedly passing. So – Playing with heavy hearts this year, Ed, are the Lake Taylor Titans, and we send our best to them. And it's hard to uh, imagine not seeing him on the sidelines because he's been around so many, so many big games. And Lake Taylor's won so many big games under Hank Sawyer after being snake bit for a lot of those years. Uh, and now them in Class Three, not in Class Four. As you see some of our top tens rolling across the bottom of your your ticker here screen right now, uh, flashing on there right now is the Class Three top ten, where the Titans are sandwiched in between Magna Vista, Lower Botetourt, Liberty Christian, Brookville, Heritage of Lynchburg, Brentsville District, and then you'll see uh, Bay Rivers team they could run into with Lafayette. Their region's got Lafayette, Hopewell, uh, and I see Norcom, who I think is going to be a little bit of a surprise team, looking good from their recent scrimmage that they just had with uh, Western Branch, but. Uh, you know, I think you have to start with Maury Lake Taylor, right? One, two? Yeah, I say Maury Lake Taylor, one, two. And I think now there's a division after that. But I would fill that hole in there probably with Churchland, slight okay. edge over Norcom. I'm with you on the Churchland three. Actually, you know what? Just to be a different guy, because I'm going to be different, just, just to be different from you. I don't want to have the same thing as you because I feel like you're going to jinx that. I'll go Norcom three, Churchland four. I will caution this. Remember, Norview pulled off a surprise early in the season. I don't think we expected him to beat – uh, Grassfield in the opener under its new coach and Herb Lawrence, and they actually made the playoffs a year ago. Uh, Booker T has been a trendy pick a couple times. We know Stone Robertson's had some good athletes. Remember a couple years ago, the running back Rodney Hammond, who's at Pittsburgh, playing a prominent role for the Panthers in the ACC. If you're looking for a surprise team, watch out. Granby Comets have some really impressive-looking athletes. Watched them in seven-on-seven seven over at Kellum and Kendall Jefferson, the new head coach there. They could pull up a surprise or two. So I think Granby could have some buzz after some Friday nights for us, uh, which has not been the case for them in an awful long time. So there is our Eastern District uh, top four picks. How about the players of the year now as uh, offense, defense? I'll let you go first this time for both because I took them the last two times. You can go a couple of different directions here. You got some studs. You have Watford. You have Johnson. You have Floyd. You have Washington, Big Moss. You have some studs in this district. You're going to take one. You're going to leave me one or two of the others. So where are you going for your pick? I'm, I'm going – Player of the year on offense, and I like this kid because I saw him on the basketball court, um, is, is Elijah Washington. As you said, they call him Moss, uh, the big, tall, 6'7 receiver, uh, Syracuse commit. I'm, I'm going to go with him because he can change the game. I mean, he's going to catch stuff up in the air. He can reach out and get stuff. He's catching over. He can catch in contact. And he's got the legs to, to, to create distance once he catches it. So in a, in a district where there is a lot of choices for top offensive players and then for that matter, defense, I'm going to go Elijah Washington, Lake Taylor wide receiver. So last year he had 16 touchdowns on, was it 43 receptions? I believe it was. Yes. 877 yards. We go with this year, 20 touchdowns he gets. I, I would say a thousand yards receiver. Ooh. Over 50 catches, 1,000 yards, and I would say 20 would be a low. 
number four touchdowns. I think he's going to be very likely could be maybe lead this uh, er, this whole area in uh, touchdown receiving. See, I love Moss's game. I think he's as good a prospect as there is in the entire area. But and there's always a but. Yeah, there's always a but. Sometimes people have. Anyways, I'll leave that alone. Bigger than others. Uh, last year they couldn't sure. double him because of Edwards, the other receiver that was a big threat. I think his teammate, quarterback Jameer Sporty Freeman, who can run it and throw it, is going to be a real factor for this. Maury's got two really good quarterback options with Otori Newkirk and Kendall Daniels, who's coming off an injury, and he had a ton of yards in production uh, last season, over 1,200 all-purpose yards, 12 touchdowns on offense to go with his work at free safety. But I'm going to go with uh, another guy here uh, from the Maury Commodores to get the uh, player of the year on the offensive side of the ball. I'm going to actually say it's going to be Fred Johnson. I think he's such a good stud defensively, but they're going to throw him a lot of lobs in the red zone, and he'll have like eight or nine touchdown catches just based off of that. So I'm going to go with him to be the offensive player of the year from Maury. So where are you going for defensive player of the year? Are you going to go with well, Floyd or are you going to go somewhere else? I, I would say I, I was actually going to look at um, Fred Johnson, the guy you just really? mentioned, for the outside linebacker when he goes to the other side of You can of take the ball. him for defense if you want. Uh, but you know what? Uh, the Floyd guy, I mean, watched his interview, four-year starter, um, and he's, he's very good, too, on both sides of the ball, as, as seen by the uh, All-State selection for both sides of the ball, um, and he's pretty good in that defensive backfield. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Floyd, but I, I'm, it's only an inch over Fred Johnson as my defensive player of the year. I'm going to go with, and it, by the way, it could be any one of those receivers from Maury, not just uh, Fred Johnson. It could be LeBron Bond. It could be Josh Powell. It could be one of their running backs, whether it be – uh, low Melvin Low, uh, Palmer. It could be a lot of different guys from Maury's offense, and that, that might split the pe- the pie. That gives it someone from Lake Taylor, or say a Dontavious Booker from a Churchland, a Matthew Outen, and a Keem Jones from Norcom. But I'm going to go with Ari Watford because he comes in Ballyhood from Salem. People wonder if he's, you know, in a lot of eyes, is he as good as a four upper four star, five star recruit? And he's going to have a lot of free ups because Fred Johnson's on one side, he's on the other. So I think Watford could have 15, 20 sacks, and I think he's going to be the pick for defensive player of the year so there you have it those are our picks and uh, we've got one more coach to hear from the eastern district and i'll tell you what when you go out to portsmouth and a lot of times it's a party and they're hoping to have that on friday nights after football games with the galloping greyhounds of ic norcom high school yeah and you had the opportunity to speak to their leader their head coach anthony hawkins so uh, let's see what uh, the hawk says about his norcom greyhounds and uh, maybe a little bit of insight on his look at the eastern district I'm here with Norcom at football coach Anthony Hawkins. Greyhounds win their preseason scrimmage 13-0 over Western Branch. Class 3 school beats the reigning Region 6A champs. I know it's just an exhibition, but you have to feel pretty good about how your guys competed, the effort they showed, and the way the defense really flew around today. Yeah, you know, uh, we've been preaching these last couple of weeks. You know, we've been grinding summer, summer work, two a day. So, you know, we've just been preaching execution. Getting better from last week against um, Deep Creek. We had our first scrimmage. So we just got better, had a film session, went out on the field, got good preparation towards the week to get ready. Now this was our dress rehearsal. We're getting ready for next week when the stage and the curtains open for the first game. Let's shout out those dudes that made the ball hawking plays, if you will. I know you only bring back about five starters defensively, lost right. a couple of your top tacklers, but you had, I think, four interceptions today, including definitely. one you almost ran back to the house. Tell me about those guys that are the opportunistic takeaway players, if you will. Well, we, we definitely, like I said, uh, we have a young, talented team. We're very hungry. Uh, those guys, Jody Shelton Jr., he just became a captain of this team. He's a junior. Mm-hmm. He's stepping up every day. Every day he's getting better. And then we got Tyree Turner. He's a sophomore. He's also number 21. Mm-hmm. Learning the system. These guys just learning the system, getting that great high pride in them. We're getting that standard of win, whatever's needed. And we're just going, man. We're just getting better day by day. And I believe a lot of your coaches on the sideline shouting out, was it number three? Is that Fred Staten for you? I, want to say, I might be getting the name wrong. Yeah, Frederico Staten. Frederico Staten. Yeah. He was really out there hustling. Yes, yes, yes. The safe yes, spot back yes. He's definitely he's got a high IQ for the game. He's been playing since his freshman year. So this is his junior year. And he's stepping it up big time. He's stepping up for the younger guys, showing them leading the way. And he's just getting better and better day by day also. I know this was a defensively driven uh, scrimmage, and the scoreboard says you came on top. You'll take it 13 nothing. But when you did complete some passes, one of the young men that we talked about a lot uh, in the offseason has gotten some offers, uh, Matthew Allen for you, number yes. six out of here. He made some plays with the ball. If you get the maximize his touches, he could be pretty scary, could he not? Yes, he's explosive, man. Yeah. He's just a different guy. He's a power five guy. 
speed and size. He definitely, he definitely has what you need to go to the next level. So I try to give him the ball in his hands as much as possible while in space. So he's he's dynamic with the ball in his hands. So. Like I said, we're going to keep working, keep keep getting better day by day. Come on, Freddie. This says that you took away the scrimmage of victory, but it feels like your guys aren't rah-rah. You still have a lot of work to get done before the game went open against Grafton. What sort of your initial takeaways as, as the head coach and the positive things you have to clean up on? Well, like I said, they, they're taking – they're, they're taking that um, that that standard and their, their win standard, whatever is needed, through the commitment of excellence, and they're really living their life by that. So, mm -hmm. so um, you know, we're just about coming out here, executing what we teach, getting better off of the mistakes during the week of practice. Preparation is key. So, you know, we're just revving up for drafting next week. Um, I have a great coaching staff. Great young players that's willing to work and get better every day. So, you know, just bringing this great high pride back, bringing this nostalgia back. And lastly, being a member of that state championship team back in the day at Norcom High School, to see the stands packed here right. at the Langston right. Stadium probably gives you some excitement. And, and you've got to feel like, hey, this can be something we can pack the stands every week here. What, what's this kind of do for the community and the pride of Portsmouth, if you will? Most definitely. Well, you know, I played on state championship team, Coach DT. Um, so we're bringing that nostalgia back. We're bringing that energy. We were that. We didn't know nothing about losing when we played. So um, the kids seeing that, they seeing the stadiums packed. Last week, D Creek, we had like 2,000 out here today. About the same or maybe more. But So they're, they're starting to see it in real life time, um, what they can do. If they keep if they keep preparing themselves, you know, with that mindset, everything is a mindset. And we're just going to keep going and glory to God. Definitely. And the progress continues for Coach Hawkins in year two at the helm. And uh, all the best. Should be a lot of fun for the Galloping Greyhounds on Friday nights this year. We'll see you soon. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. So that was Anthony Hawkins. Norcom getting a scrimmage shutout uh, on Friday at 13 nothing of Western Branch. That won't count in the win-loss column as 1-0 for them. They'll have grafting coming up, and the schedule will get harder from there. They take on CH Flowers at home out of Maryland at Norview at Island Springs on September 15th before trips to Manor. Maury and then their big Portsmouth rivalry with Church on October 6th before the bye week. And then they finish up with Granby, Lake Taylor, and Booker T. Washington. But my goodness, uh, I feel like they're trending upward. Remember last year, they got tattooed. They got walloped in game one by Lake Taylor. They recovered from that, got to the region semis, fell to eventual state champion Phoebus. But in class three, I don't think there's a lot of teams they will be intimidated by. There will be a few that can maybe match up with them skill-wise, strength-wise, scheme-wise but they won't be afraid of them or frightened, as they say. No, I, I think talent-wise, athleticism-wise, Norcom is is heads and shoulders with everybody else. So I just think it's them putting it together at the right thing. And again, line play. Um, that Western branch, winning that West, Western branch scrimmage, that was big. As I think we both think Western branch is, is probably one of the top 10 teams in the 757 this year. So Correct. That that's a that's a nice win for them if they've done everything right. And I know it's just like NFL exhibition games. You don't put a whole lot of stock in it because it's a lot of different players, maybe some coaches playing kids in certain areas, especially on high school level exhibition games, different areas to see what they can do. So you don't want to put a lot of stock in it. But if I'm playing somebody like a Western Branch and you could tell me, hey, you can win the scrimmage or lose the scrimmage, but it's just a scrimmage, I'll take the win. Because I think that's big as, as you go into your first game of the year. And who, now, who do you say they play first game this time this year? For Norcom, it's uh, Grafton. See, I think just given a quick early season pick and game, I'm, I would say Norcom wins that. It's a big difference opening up with a Lake Taylor. So yeah. I think um, that that could be a win for them. If, they, if that's true, they get a win off of uh, Western Branch. They go into their first game and, and maybe get that win over Grafton. That's some nice momentum as they move on into that season. Ed is the head basketball coach at Nans Minerva. And coming up next, it's his district, the Southeastern, with the schools from Chesapeake and Suffolk. But first, let's hear from our friends at Shine Time Power Wash and Paint Professionals. Revitalize your property today. Shine Time is your turnkey solution for all power washing and painting projects. With years of experience in both residential and large scale commercial settings, their focus is to bring new life to your home building or outdoor space and ensure 100% customer satisfaction every time. Shine Time Power Wash.
Hampton Roads has a long-running high school and college sports tradition. It's time to give them the spotlight they deserve. This is 757 Saturday Sports Talk. Here are Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young. And we're back with you with the Coach Ed Young. I am Matt Hatfield. And, uh, Ed, it's time now to go through the Southeastern District. We've got some Player of the Year selections to make for offense, for defense. I think this is going to be a really compelling district race because I feel like the Suffolk schools, specifically Kings Fork and Nans, whenever you are in Suffolk, so you know it's been viewed as a basketball town for many, many years. I feel like they've closed the gap with the Chesapeake teams. And that's not saying that you're Oscar Smith – just a couple of seasons removed from winning back-to-back state championships. Western Branch, which has certainly restored that Bruin Pride and tradition under Rashad Cook winning a region championship last year. Indian River and Deep Creek are slouches or have fallen off, but I think the Suffolk schools have gotten better. And now there's four to five hundred different te- teams on a given week that can look like the league's best, which you couldn't have said years ago. You always said it's Oscar Smith, beginning of story, end of story. I agree 100% with that. that pretty much it was – pretty much everybody fighting for second place. That's not really true now. And I also think could be, and I'm going to hesitate saying, but I could be each week. It might be somebody different in first place with this, this league. Um, I'll expose my pick real quick. I still want to stay with Oscar Smith as, as the number one, but Kings fork my, 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 my guys at Nazareth river. I, I watched practice a little bit. I won't count them out. And, and they got a player that I absolutely love that you better not steal for a player of the year. But let's let's do this. Before you put your one through four, and your, your prognostication hat, which is sometimes sideways when you do it, let's hear from a few of the coaches. We've got Chris Scott of Oscar Smith. We've got Rashad Cook of Western Branch. We've got Anthony Joffrey on of Kings Fork. Who would you like to hear from first, sir? Let's go with Coach Scott, Oscar Smith. So here's the coach of the Tigers, two-time state champs under his direction, four times overall after their scrimmage with Dinwiddie just a little more than a week ago. All right, I'm here with Oscar Smith, head football coach, Chris Scott. And, uh, Coach, this was a heck of a scrimmage once again with your Dinwiddie Generals and your good friend Billy Mills. You've done this for many, many years, even going back to when you were at Ocean Lakes. And uh, this was a defensive type of battle for much of the scrimmage, uh, game situation before that as well. Uh, what do you think you took out of it and the things that you will ultimately use moving forward from it? Yeah, I think that um – we did some things on offense that were pretty good, seeing some of the young guys in, knowing that we're we, right now we got to figure out what we're, what we're going to do at quarterback. Mm-hmm. So we got some good things and evaluating. But like you said, it was a good defensive back and forth. We know that we're fast on defense, we're fast on offense, but knowing how we're going to what, what which trigger man is it going to be back there is what we're trying to figure out. I thought uh, good things is is uh, Coach Seen, Coach Thurgood did a g- great job calling a really really good game. Um, mm-hmm. This this uh, against a defense that gave us odd front shifted moved i mean they're, they're gonna play against a pretty good team next week and uh you know us us being in our first scrimmage and kind of trying to trying to get in rhythm and flow when you play against a good team they give you a lot to work on right yeah. and that's the thing about going against coach mills that we really really like i think defensively we flew around stayed a lot in base didn't try to do a lot of a lot of different things and you know having coming out of camp a little nicked up you know you got three or four guys that are some really special guys standing on the sidelines so we're gonna get a little healthy but we found out you know, some depth. We're at number seven and number eight on the offensive line right now. So being able to build that depth is something positive, especially with evaluating three different quarterbacks back there. Yeah, and, and with those two main guys, I mean, one's a ninth grader, one's a senior. How do you assess the and the names for folks that, folks that don't know? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we we'll, we'll assess. We, you know, we went eight, eight, and eight for twenty four plays. We made made sure that all of them had one going to the right, one going to the left. You know, um, it's obviously each each play is unique in itself, but just getting a good evaluation of of freshmen. Um, That's Lonnie. Yep. Andrews. Okay. Yep. And then we got a great sophomore coming in, and then and then with the senior uh, back there that Mark can play anything. I mean, he's been in this offense for four years, so uh, and he did a great job moving today. And I think some of the some of that being, just being natural and being a senior guy kind of showed a little bit and being a little comfortable. So it's good. I think getting a good competition. And letting guys get seasoned a little bit, and that's I think that's what happened today. So, um, Coach Thurgood in the defense, uh, Giovanni Simmons. It's fun watching those guys coach them up, and I think this team's going to be pretty special as we go forward. You remember coaching them, so it's uh, we're right. all getting older. Uh, looking at some of the guys that made splash plays throughout the scrimmage, I know one who made some for you last year, Gerard Wilson off the edge. He must have had two or three, if you would call it live sacks, if yeah. you will. What's he bring to your your defense, and uh, what's his overall ceiling in your eyes? Yeah, I think that uh, he reminds me of a jo- uh, Jockey Hilliard. Um, you know, kind of that outside linebacker that has the speed off the edge, um, 
Sage Harold ish, you know, not not as long, mm -hmm. but uh, pretty athletic, running things down from the backside. When quarterbacks try to roll out and get on the run, that's when he's at his best. But he's strong enough and has enough weight sitting in there about 210, 215 to be able to hold up against most runs, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that uh, he will be leading us up front um, and, and will be a guy that uh, will. will We'll rack up some tackles and sacks, and I think that uh, could, could be a, a defensive player type of year candidate. Mm -hmm. Interesting blend for you at the receiving core. You've got a young pup who's got – he showed an incredible leaping play in Travis Johnson. I remember older brother Tory obviously played for you now at West Virginia. And then Isaiah Akers seemed to be pretty consistent today making catches for you in different spots. Yeah, it's, it's what you love out of a senior guy, to be consistent, making some blocks, making some effort plays. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get a chance to see that with a senior guy. And um, – and seeing Travis out there, I mean, Travis runs around and does some things that we've seen in practice that uh, it kind of reminds me of a long, skinny guy, kind of a uh, hunter -ish yeah. at times. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And he's uh, he does a lot of good things. You can see that one-handed catch there at the end. Mm -hmm. So he's got a lot of special, unique qualities that we we will see that some big-time explosive plays as we move on. A couple more for you. One of the young men that just stands out physically and imposing is Jordan McDowell in the trenches. He's a player that's got a lot of upside to him, is he not? Yeah, he does. Uh, there's one of one of our guys that he's playing inside, he's playing outside, he's moving around, but uh, what's constant is he's, he's got good size, and he's going to have to be a, a guy that hunkers down for us as we get some of our guys coming off the edge with mm -hmm. speed. But, yeah, he's going to be a guy in the middle that – that is gonna gonna be a big presence for us. Lastly, you do something that's never happened in Oscar Smith before, winning back to back state championships, doing it in the same calendar year while COVID was going on. And then last year, Oscar Smith does not make the regional final for the first time since I think it was two thousand three. So you you experienced the highs and the for I guess Smith people that got a little spoiled, the lows if you will yeah. to an extent. Did you approach this off season any differently? After that, those the highs and then just kind of the, the difference, if you will? I think that we just knew that it was time to get to work right away. Okay. I mean, the, what, the only thing that's different is that we're used to kind of finishing up in December mm -hmm. and then getting back going two weeks. Yeah. We're not used to finishing up at the, you know, November-ish, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and so with that, that just gave us a little bit more to get hungry for, you know. And so it was getting to work right away. And some of those guys had a really good off season, you know, stacking up about 40 to 50 offers. Well, now it's uh, to, to make sure that, Everyone sees that those offers are real, you know, and these guys make some plays up here. I think uh, all in all, in regards to how how things planned out last year, this is a totally different team. Mm -hmm. It's a totally different team with a lot of new players, a lot of young young guys, and young guys like eighth graders who are ready to step up to be the starting quarterback potentially, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the uh, the Smith standard is always to elevate standing on the shoulders of the Giants. But uh, I think at the end of the day and at the end of the season, we'll be very, very proud of where this team finishes up. And it hasn't changed. The stands are still packed here at Oscar Smith Beard along Easley uh, Stadium. Thank you so much. Look forward to the journey for you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, buddy. So that was Chris Scott of the Oscar Smith Tigers. Ed, after a scrimmage with Dinwiddie, I believe it was like a 7-7 draw if you kept track. Uh, interesting response to the, you know, do you approach the offseason any differently after they were on the, you know, the, the highs of highs, two state titles in a calendar year, not winning the state championship, not even making it to the region championship for the first time in basically 20 years. Uh, that is a big contrast stark for them to go from that to that, although I wouldn't say they've fallen off. They do have a lot of youngsters as far as underclassmen going. you got three players in the quarterback mix with, I believe, Lonnie Andrews Jr., a freshman who I covered his dad playing. Rest his peace to him. He passed away many years ago. And by the way, we also want to send condolences to the Oscar Smith family. They lost that lineman, Taj Boyd, who died tragically, was uh, getting ready to start his college career at Liberty. I know that was an unfortunate passing for him. Um, but so they're going through some things much like Lake Taylor is um, on, you know, the away from the field front. But so you got three quarterbacks in the mix with uh, Andrews Jr., Jamar Wright, the senior and Owen Kelly, the Hickory transfer. You've got a running back receiver skill guy in Jamari Bam Knox, who's coming off that gruesome injury that cut his season short last year in the Western Branch game towards the end of the regular season. And then you've just got a bunch of freshmen, sophomore juniors that are making their names, their marks. They don't have as many dominant senior guys that are committed to the next level. I think they have just one current senior commit in an offensive lineman in Cam Heath to William & Mary. So this is a group that you feel like is going to be better positioned for a championship run in 24-25. But if they peak earlier than that, then they could be on a run for two or three like they've had in years past. Agreed. Um we're talking about a Smith. You're agreeing with me too much today. To, uh, well, I'm 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 going to call it like it is. Uh, if I don't, I'm going to let you know. I'm I'm picking Smith, slight first in this district because Aren't they you? have they're young, but they got some really good athletes. And sometimes the young kids, if you keep them focused and straight, they don't really know how bad they could be. They just go out and play with a lot of enthusiasm, and and you you. 
let them do what they do. But that it's hard to go against the tradition. Uh, Coach Scott has been there. Um, he was successful at Ocean Lakes. Um, I just, again, it's a program that I'm picking until they take some beatings and they can become uh, what I, the word I like to use, very pedestrian. They're not very pedestrian right now. I still think they're a team that's up there. That they hunt tough with Dinwiddie in the scrimmage. Dinwiddie's going to is going to be pretty good this year too. So uh, I'm I believe Smith is down when I see him down right now. I think they're going to they're going to do very well this year. So you're picking Smith one. Are you going to give us two through four? You want to hear another coach first before we do that? But it's it's your call here. No, let's 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 pick up on uh, people want to hear these coaches more so than they want to hear me. So let's go with the coaches and. I'll, We'll get some coaches done, and then we can go ahead and finish up on uh, – we've got, we've got Joffrey on, and we've got Cook. Who do you want to hear from, the Bulldogs or the Bruins? They both chant against you, and, and they like to uh, – not put hexes on you. That's Daryl from Maury, but they like to get in your head. So, I love it. I, it. It brings excitement when when I can get the opposing crowd up about me. <laughs> Excuse me, and I don't even play. That's tremendous. But uh, uh, let's go Kings Fork. All right, so this is Coach Anthony Joffrey on. Let's give it a listen now. All right, I'm here with Kings Fork Head football coach Anthony Joffrey. I'm one of the many teams here, the Bulldogs, along with uh, several others in this Lance Town team camp gearing up for the season. Coach, always has to be neat for you and your kids, your staff, to see someone different as you gear up for the Southeastern yes, District, sir. the new region, which we'll get to in uh, Class 5, Region B, after beating Class 4 previously. And you yes, got some uh, good components to build with. Yes, sir. Um, I, first, I want to thank Coach Jackson for organizing. It's been a really well-organized, well-ran event. Um, it's been really fun. Um, shout out to Coach Hall today. Um, we we had a great scrimmage, man. We got a lot of work in. We got a lot of film. We got a lot of guy, different guys getting reps. Sure. Um, it's just huge to see what you got. Like it's just it's very good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Different than seven on seven, but to see two of the best uh, I think prospects in the nation in the class of twenty twenty five, they got an offensive tackle to Salem. You mentioned Coach Hall with Jalen Gilchrist. You have yes, a running sir. back in Javon Ford, who's known the last couple of years. Uh, Big time player, and he's gotten faster. It looks like. Yes, sir. He's gotten so much faster, man. He's been training every single day. You know, taking the proper rest days and everything like that. But um, more importantly, man, he's just a great teammate. His teammates love him. You know, we're breaking in um, two new quarterbacks: DeAndre, Artis Boone, and Gabe Craig. Um, so you know, having a security blanket like Javon Ford, man, it makes you know that transition from Cameron Butler to our new guy. Um, you know, it's gonna make it fairly easy. That's certainly the thing people are gonna be watching about. Like it is with every team, how the quarterback position when you break someone in new, how they do. But it feels like you have a lot of skill players to go with Ford linemen too. And then one of the things I noticed on day one of this camp was your defense flew to the football all levels. Yes, sir. Our, I'm gonna be honest. So we're returning 18 starters from last 18 starters from last year's team. Um, you know, the guys we're missing this year, you know, Latavion One was a three-year starter, Antoine Gray, um, you know, of course, Cameron Butler, um, you know, Kalitri Boyd. You know, we had guys, you know, who I coached in seventh grade. So this group is like my first group where they all they know is me as the head coach. Um, it makes it, you know, coaching easy. It makes, you know, just everything easier. And these kids are just bought into our culture, and um, they just expect to win. Um, you know, the last two seasons have been the best in Kings 4 history, you know, back-to-back -back 10 wins. Um, you know, we took a tough loss in the regional final. Um, but I just think these, this group now and the co assistant coaches as well, we just know the expectation. Now. Yeah, it feels like there's still definitely a culture there of winning. You, you expect to go far in the playoffs, and you don't have to get this group to play hard or excited. It's a matter of just maybe toning it down sometimes, right? Yeah, at this point, <laughs> it's really just coaching the details. Yeah. And these kids, man, they'll come in early. Like, I had kids come in today at 9 o'clock yeah. um, just wanting to watch film, wanting to take coaching. And um, I would say that's the biggest difference with this group. Like, they just they want feedback. They want to be coached hard. You know, they just they want to be – you know, the best team in Kings 4 history, and that's what we try to do every single year. A couple more for you to let you run. Appreciate the time. Uh, give me a couple of names that could be breakout players that we're talking about in the same maybe breadth of those, such as the the, the uh, Kalichi Boyd from the last couple of years and yes, now Javon Ford and others. Who would be yes, maybe sir. a name or two so, you can um, highlight? The, the, first, the first guy i got to mention is Kayvon Blandon. You know, he has over 10 Division One offers. He's, um, you know, he recently transferred in from Green Run High School, and um, he's a talented kid. He's humble, takes coaching, and he just fits in perfect with our culture here at Kings 4. Expect him to do really big things. Um, our second guy, he's also a newcomer from Norcom High School, um, Daryl Wilson Jr. Um, he's a track guy. He had over 10 touchdowns, five picks last year for Norcom. He's going to be a very solid guy for us. You know, he came in in December, ran track for us, just been a part of the program. Um, you know, it's just those two guys have came in and just molded directly with our team. Um, Jacoby Leonard, you know, he had 14 sacks last year, but right now he's out with an injury. You know, he tore his ACL wrestling. Um, so he'll be back right before the start of camp. We're really excited to get him back. Um, and then Cameron McDaniel, he's another kid, four-year starter, squad 600. You know, he's 6'1". Um, 
15 years ago, he would have like 30 offers. But, you know, they, they want D tackle 6'5", 6'4", and up. Um, but he's, he's just a great football player. Um, and then Keontae Bumbers, got to mention this guy. Last year as a freshman, he had seven touchdowns mm. as a freshman. Um, so very excited. You know, he had a big long run today. I'm really excited for him. And then we return all five offensive linemen, which is huge. It's a big deal. Um, and then, you know, right now, you know, DeAndre Artis Boom, you know, he started three games last year. Mm-hmm. He ended up starting a playoff game after the only kid I've ever been a head coach. You know, he's been my quarterback. And um, he had to go in and start a playoff game against a tough deep creek. And, um, you know, found a way to win. So um, I feel like we got a lot of experience. Just got to keep getting better. Lastly, uh, Region 5B is no cupcake or picnic. Oh, yes. I mean, you got Maury, who's yes. viewed as a state championship team every year. You got Warwick, who knocked you out in the playoffs. Nance River, Suffolk rivalry with you guys yes, and them. Sir. I mean, it's going to be a real gauntlet, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm just so excited we did move up to Region. You know, it's going to give more publicity to the school. You know, you play more like local teams, so there's more exposure. You know, not to say Region 4A wasn't competitive, but it's not, you know, you just play teams that are, you know, in Williamsburg, and then you play a team all the way in Richmond. Um, I think moving up to five, you know, it's just going to give more exposure to Kings Fort, and we're very excited, you know, very excited to join this tough region and, um, you know, see what we can do in the region. You know, I'm fairly confident, you know, our kids have bought in, coaches have bought in. I'm just really excited for this team coming up. Thanks so much. All the best. We'll see you come August. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. So that was Anthony Joffrey of the Kings Fork Bulldogs. Ed, I know they lost that tough one in the regular season finale to the Warriors of Nansman River. Their Suffolk rival went to OT. Uh, Then they went in the playoffs, beat Deep Creek in a Barn burner game, uh, got to the regional finals, fell against the Warwick Raiders after prevailing over, I believe, Warhill in the semifinals. But man, oh man, they got a lot back. 18 starters you heard. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna steal the thunder right now. I'm gonna go shock the world. I'm going Kings Fork one because I did correctly pick a few years ago when they snapped the 99 game win streak of Oscar Smith in the Southeastern District. I'm picking the Bulldogs one with the bite. And I'm going with my guy, Javon Ford, who had 1,044 yards, 11 touchdown runs on that 8-1 and one start before he got hurt at the end of the season last year as a 10th grader. He's got a bunch of offers. I'm going with him for offensive player of the year. So take that, pow, right in a kisser. Pow, right in a kisser to you. Yeah, you you um, got me on that. Uh, you jumped right into it, took it. And I think it was your turn anyways to go first. So yeah. I don't mind that. Well, you went uh, for your first pick, but we both had to go two through four with the district, two through four, and we got defensive players of the year for both of us, and you have an offensive third year pick. Plus, we have Rashad Cook to hear from from Western Branch before we take our time out here from one of our lovely sponsors. But just wanted to jump in there and get that out there before you stole it from me. So there you go. Yeah, I haven't even really looked at real hard here on the uh, players. I, I may need to hear uh, – yeah, Chop, uh, chop. Do it. Work on it. I might need to hear Coach from Western Branch speak first before I – and I can peruse. All right. Players I want to pick because I tell you what, this Southeastern District has got a lot of, a lot of top athletes and in, in both sides of that ball. But um, would you like to do that now, or do you want to react to what Coach Joffron had to say there? Well, I think Coach, well, Coach Joffron has just done a tremendous, tremendous job at Kings Fork, and and yes, I'm picking Smith probably by a game. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised that they Not both end up tied, yeah. tied for the doggone thing, and I would be surprised Kings Fork. I'll make this statement out loud. Goes undefeated. Um, I think you've got a three or three or four way tie in the district this year. Is that not crazy to think? You got three or four teams all like one or two losses in a district. I think right. it's very possible. Right, very because possible. you're going to have they're going to be taking hits every night. There's, a, yeah, I think it's a six team race. Not to disparage the other four to f- you know four teams in there, but I feel like in any order you want to slice them with Smith. Western Branch, Indian River, Deep Creek, the four chess peaks, and then the two Suffolk, uh, two Suffolk schools with Nansman and Kings Fork. And then you have the others trying to splash that party of, of Great Bridge, Hickory, Grassfield, Lakeland, all trying to say you forgot about us. But I feel like those six are separated from the other four as far as viable playoff threats and contenders, if you will. I, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I mean – Another agreement. That's like three for three. Yeah, we you get – it, now, when we do this talking head stuff and these predictions, you you, we, you and I both hear from the congregation of, hey, I see you picked this fifth. Hey, you didn't even mention it. We can't pick everybody one. We can't mention everybody. And, yes, we're going to make a ton of mistakes. That's fine. Just go out and prove us wrong. I have no problem with that. Hey, uh, you know, wrong many, time, many times in this. But, again, that southeastern district – loaded with athletes, not that other districts aren't, and they're beating up each other every Friday night. So 
so I said, what looks good this Friday, the following Friday could be somebody different on top. But okay. there's a lot of people that are going to be in this race. I, I would think top to bottom, this could be of the power districts. This could be the best district. And we have not said that a whole lot in the past. A lot of times we look at Peninsula District right off the bat, Beach District. I, I dare say right now, Southeastern District for this year, top to bottom, number one to number 10, last place, is the best football district. And I know that will upset a ton of people. Guess so, what? I agree with you. I agree with you. Guess what? How about you agree? That? God dang. We just – too much – ever since we got this podcast, it's too oh, much. No. Fan. It's not going to bring us a fan base – because the fan base is always telling me, prove this joker over here. Where's he at? He's he's over that way. That punch way. him. Punch him. Yeah. Punch him that way. Prove yeah. this joker wrong because it's easy to do that. Boom. Boom. But Boom. so far, oh, right in the I'm, I'm agreeing. Because he does his homework, people. I, I got to yeah. give him that credit. He does his homework. He gets some insight on these. Um, I'll argue a little more with him come basketball. But football, I'm going to kind of. Uh, bandwagon him a little bit, but I, yeah. I will say where my disagreements are when I see him. But oh, right now, you know, got, they don't disagree with me. Yeah, you got Kings Fork one, I got Austin Smith one, so we got the disagreement right there. Well, let's before we do two through four in our district picks and other players of the year. You want to see what's brewing or what's cooking at Western Branch? See what I did there? Yeah, yeah, I like both of those. I like both of those. Yeah. We're gonna see, we're gonna talk right now. Well, you're gonna talk right now with Coach Cook over at Western Branch. And uh, he's going to tell us what's brewing over there because he's the cook. I'm here with Western Branch head football coach Rashad Cook after his team's preseason scrimmage in Portsmouth against the Norcom Greyhounds and your former assistant there and Coach Hawkins there. Uh, coach, uh, being region defending champs, a uh, nice crowd here tonight. I know some things you have to clean up, and I imagine the word you're going to tell me is execution, 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 right? Yeah, it's the little things. Uh, we came into this with our, into this contest with our first as our first scrimmage. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have that. Week, a week ago scrimmage to where we could see a little mistakes and see if we could clean those mistakes up going into tonight. You know, shout out to Coach Hawk, you know, and Norcom. Uh, they had a good group. You know, those guys competed well. Uh, we just got to clean up a few things, which is fine. It's not a lot we got to do. Mm -hmm. We just got to get in sync. And that's the message I just shared with our guys. And you graduated a lot of valuable seniors from your region championship team, such as Paul Billups, who's now at North Carolina, Shamik Blizzard. The list goes on and on both yeah. sides of the football. But you do have some nice pieces. Even today we saw uh, Devin Cook, your son, the Wake Forest commit, make some catches. He gets the ball in space. He's a playmaker and a problem. And then defensively, you got some guys, including uh, Jojo Appleway at linebacker, yes. I think. If people don't know now, they're going to know him pretty soon. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we graduated those guys. They moved on. and We made that message clear in February. Uh, we got some playmakers here, man. You know, we're young, but we got some guys that can really get at it, get vertical, uh, take the roof off the top. And, you know, our run game is going to be there. You know, we got a young offensive line, but we're anchored by uh, Aiden Lorsall. You know, and with him, he's going to be our quarterback of the O-line and getting those guys adjusted. Um, ultimately, you know, we're young at quarterback, but Derek is really cerebral. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Once he figures it out, he doesn't make those same mistakes twice. Mm -hmm. And that's the piece we're trying to get him to, to where he can understand his throws, where they're going while they're going there, and then at that point, I believe that he's going to lead the charge for us for the next 10 weeks. And you're no longer a young head coach. You're a veteran at this thing. So in, in scrimmages such as this, you can experiment a little bit, and also you might not show your hand is what you'll do, say, game one, game two, the district, if you will, correct? Correct, absolutely. Um, what we came into this game plan with is everything we installed in uh, camp. And, you know, to me, kids will play faster that way. Uh, trying versus trying to match it up, you know, against your opponent. Uh, we're in a good space, you know. We're in a good space. Our staff, all of us together, we've been together for almost four years together collectively. We're going to be fine. Um, it's just a scrimmage, you know. It's good to see our kids kind of take it a little bit more serious, mm -hmm. but the, the, our score, our record is still 0-0. Zero, zero. Right. You know what I mean? Win-loss. Well, two things about that. One, you've got a little bit of a target on your back because Western Branch has sort of restored that tradition, if you will. And two, is it also good to get a little humble pie a little bit? Maybe you guys start to feel a little bit, all right, maybe we're not the guys that did this last year to a degree? Or? <laughs> no, not, not at all. You know, okay. we always operate in humility and humbleness. Okay. It's never, you know, trying to put us back in place. It's, sure. it's summer. It's scrimmage. You know, our first contest is next week against Mintzville. We just got to make some adjustments, you know, and, and get these guys rolling. The beauty is, the biggest victory for me is, we all came out healthy, you know, yeah. both sides of the ball yeah. and both schools. Uh, we opened up six uh, days from now. So it's really about going into uh, our first opening night 
uh, we're all horses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Last two for you. What do you think is the strength of this football team? I know you had a large turnout in terms of the roster, number right. of players so far. CJ, right. is that it? That you have some pretty good depth in some spots? What do you think maybe your strength or strong suits will be? Yeah, we have depth. I don't think we tapped into that quite a bit, but that still comes with chemistry. That still comes with time. That still comes with growth and development within the position groups. Um, ultimately, I feel like our identity is going to be very explosive. Uh, we're going to be very physical. You know, our defense is definitely there. Now it's just getting kind of synced. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just my theory, my motto leaving after tonight. Sure. And lastly, appreciate the time. What's the big picture outlook for the Bruins here in Region 6A? Are we the toughest in the state now with Highland yes. Springs jumping up with you guys? Thomas Dale, Manchester, yourself, Oscar Smith, list goes on and on. And yes. you do have an interesting schedule, as you mentioned, with Menchville to open up. And then even a private school in Benedictine in a yes. second home game. If you Absolutely. Uh, one week at a time. That one and no mentality. That'll never leave us. Uh, now it comes down to just one rep, one possession, one play versus trying to win it all. We've always, we always preach that, you know, focus on the one rep, one quarter, one play versus trying to get it all in one. Um, we're going to be fine. You know what I mean? I can't wait to interview with you down the line. But uh, right now, I really feel like our kids going into the first scrimmage, it ought to look the way it did because this is our first contest against a uh, unfamiliar opponent. And a good one, too. Enormous definitely going to be a factor Absolutely. in Class 3. Well, it should be some more fun Friday nights for Coach Cook and the Bruins in Chesapeake. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Absolutely. Thank you. So that was Rashad Cook of the Western Branch Bruins. He's going to get a chance to coach one of his sons again this year, Devin Cook. Desmond, the older son, went to uh, William & Mary as a linebacker, and uh, Devin's a big playmaker both sides of the ball. So scrimmage result, people will forget about it by a week from now, Ed, if they beat Menchville the way they're supposed to and they get roll into a 2-0, 3-0, 4-0 type of start. Uh, if they struggle in that, they might point back to it and say, see, that could have been a warning sign. So I think he's taking the right approach because I don't think you – it's the old – I mean, Hank Sawyer says it a lot. You never – things are never as good as they seem or as bad as they seem somewhere in between reality falls. You don't want to overreact or necessarily even underreact to a degree. No, I, again, if you're scrimmaging somebody who's pretty good, <clears throat> you got to – and really, final score doesn't matter, but every coach, every sport <clears throat> would like to know – what was the final score? Did we win? They're gonna, you're gonna want that because the kids will find out anyways. And it, winning always brings about a good feeling. I've always said I'd rather win a game in which we look absolutely horrible than lose a game where we were just perfect, except for maybe one, two, three seconds, and that costs us the game. I'd rather win. Period. Because you, you, winning cures all wills, especially on the high school level, without doubt. The kids are hit mentally in school when they lose a lot harder than any other level by far. Pros, it's just another game. Hey, we got to get ready. College, yeah, it's kind of just another game and you got to get you got to prepare it or you're going to get a string of losses. High school, especially football, if you lose, you you kind of suffer that loss every day until the next Friday. Um, it's just the way high school kids are. Some of them are just ruthless when you know, and they're not even playing. But um I think in terms of Western Branch, I think Coach Coach Cook has has it right. Hey, we we lost, but we lost to a good team. Um, there's stuff we can fix. I think his his biggest takeaway was we're not in shape that we should be at this point. That is a concern because in football it's a short season. You know, it's ten games. You don't you're not going over the course of three or some months unless you get down deep in the playoffs. Condition is a factor. Fatigue fatigue is the worst opponent of anybody. In, in sports. So got to get them in shape. I, I thought, you know, side note on me with basketball last year, we had a somewhat successful year. Yes, we went into the first round of regions. I thought our condition was horrible. Um, and that's my fault. Beginning of the year on, I slacked off early on some condition because I was more worried about some skill work on the court. And, and we can't always get to court when I wanted. So whenever we got it, we had to do more skill work than conditioning, though we do time together. Um, I'm going to fix that this year because we've already started our conditioning for the season midsummer and in this heat, um, not the blazing heat, but they're, we're going to be in better shape. And I think that um, Western branch is putting that on, on uh, number so, one thing. For so give us your two through four. Now you've got Smith one, are you going branch river, river, fork Creek? Where are you going for two through four? Can you hear this? I'm, I'm going to, Oh boy. Uh, what Bruin, Bruins, I'd rather the Bruins be mad at me than the Warriors. I'm going Nanza River number three. Well, well who's two? I, oh, I'm sorry, two. I got Kings Fork. Kings Fork's okay. number two. Okay. I've got 
Nancy River third, slight, right. slight, even less, less a slight edge than Smith over four for three, four. I know the Bruin fans don't, don't care. They're going to, they're going to blow me up anyway. So it right. doesn't matter where I'm Branch four. Yeah. And then, then right on their heels, ever so slightly, I got Indian River. And then right after Indian River, I got Deep Creek. You could do a three-way tie for fourth or something to get yourself nah, off. No, ties. ties. Okay. The only thing you could pick a tie for is first. You can't pick ties. Okay. You gotta, well, I did it for you fourth. Step forward. Or whatever. We got to yeah. step forward and break okay. ties. This ain't, this ain't hockey. Okay. This is one of the mistakes I hate about hockey. You got ties. Is this is an NFL preseason football where they do have ties, by the way. That's nah, another joke. Trust me, trust me, I know this because if you put some shekels down, you don't you don't win your you don't you're, win. Yeah, your, there you go. Yeah, you're in trouble. That's what I'm saying. You don't lose either. You don't you're, lose either. So sometimes no, a win and a loss is not bad, depending on you know the amounts you have invested in it. Uh, I'm gonna go King's Hork one, Oscar Smith two. Western Branch three, Nansman River four, with honorable mention. I once want to pick a three way tie for fourth with Indian River and Deep Creek right there. I know Brandon Carr's Braves and Andre Twine's Hornets are listing with bated breath. So I stole uh, the first choice for offensive 30. I'll let, you, I'll, go, I'll let you go back to back for an offense or a defense or a defense or an offense for the Southeastern. You just can't take Javon Ford. And you're going to okay. take my guy. You're going to do it. I know you are. And I'm going to punch you through the screen. Oh. Well, I've got. I've got to look at here and, and select the uh, my player of the year since I can't take the Don't four. do it. Don't do it. Um, oh, boy. Ford was my guy. Um, I'm going to go with the running back from Smith. Um, go not, Bam Knox or, or yeah. Nesbitt? You know, with no, Nesbitt? I'm going to go with um, um, Knox. Okay. Now you're assuming he's healthy because he has not suited up in either scrimmage. So well, you know. I'm I'm hoping and I'm and again, right. let me clarify picks. Okay. This is where I'm picking where the kid is ready to go game one. Okay. I'm, I'm not going with, well, he'll be out two or three games, but once he comes back, he'll be a terror. No, hmm. he's got to be ready to go. So I will go with Knox. Okay. And if he's not healthy, you go as good as your as your yeah. B. Okay. He'll be my one B because he'll take most of those carries that Knox would have right. had if he'd be he in. He might there. get him anyways. Yeah, right. yeah, you're right about that. He may get him you're anyways. Just, now, you're just giving the player of the year to Oscar Smith running back, depending on who there you go. The most carries. I got you. Now, defender of the, the answer, year. But go ahead. No, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. My defender of the year. <sighs> Boy, this is tough. I'm going to go with the kid from Nansman River. I knew you were going to take my guy, Manny Izagu. Oh, you were going to – I got to go with Manny. He, he was in my class once before, and um, um, kid is high, he had to high energy. Right? High yeah. energy. He'll be all over this field. And I'll tell you what, he, he has made himself a very good football player. Mm -hmm. I, I thought when he was a younger kid, he, he was too playful, too much of a joker. And now that I've seen him, his maturity is setting in. This kid could be a terror on the football field. Okay. And, I, and he's good. pledged for JMU. Me personally, I, and I, this is, I know people, my JMU people will hate me. He could be better than that level, though JMU okay. is very, very good. He could be better than that level down the road. I don't dispute that. And I'll tell you, and I'll go another crazy step. This kid someday can play for on Sundays for money. Ooh. That's pretty bold. Now, listen, there's a lot of good defenders from JoJo Applewhite at Western Branch to Gerard Wilson and Oscar Smith to Azagu, Daryl Wilson and Kayvon Blanding from Kings Fork, Ricky Foreman at Deep Creek. But I'm going to go with the other guy that's an edge brusher, very underrated, much like Azagu from Indian River, 67 tackles, 26 for loss, nine sacks, four forced fumbles, got an offer from Emory and Henry. And I tell you what, if Kurt Newsom gets him in the Wasps, that is a steal. That's a robbery because he is – to me, he's got FCS talent, and if he was bigger, he'd be an FBS, no doubt about it, with 15, 20-plus offers. Jordan Harris, who I watched get about seven, eight tackles for loss against Oscar Smith single-handedly last year. He's my pick. You can go him and Azagu 1A, 1B, and if you went with Wilson or Applewhite or other guys I mentioned, it's not a bad choice either. This district is loaded with really good defenders, so I'm going to go with Harris as my other choice. And, Ed, it is now time to hear from another one of our sponsors. Let's spin the wheel and see who it is this time. Spinorama, here we go, here we go. Oh, we've got on the docket One Life and Atlantic Bay. We're going to hear first from Atlantic Bay Mortgage. 
For more than 23 years, we've made it our mission to lend peace of mind. Even when times aren't very peaceful. We know that every borrower is unique. That's why we put you first in every step of the loan process. At Atlantic Bay, we are dedicated, now more than ever, to providing digital tools, resources, and a lending hand. To help you reach your home dreams. Because we're here for you. Whenever, wherever, however. Hampton Roads has a long-running high school and college sports tradition. It's time to give them the spotlight they deserve. This is 757 Sports Talk. Here are Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young. And we're back with you here to give you our Peninsula District edition of the High School Football Preview for 2023 here on this podcast episode. Again, it's all available, always available on our YouTube channel, the Virginia Sportsplex on virginiapress.com as well. And you can uh, subscribe, share, like, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your neighbor's friends, and tell your friends' neighbors. That's how it works, right? Have you done that before, Ed? Have you told your friends' neighbors or your neighbors' friends? Your friends could be your neighbor they are for me your neighbor is not always your friend i'll leave it at that but you this guy here the one that's talking over here jumps in a neighbor's pool you go you stay on his pool thing by the way by the way i had one of the uh coaches bring up to me uh they love the poolside adventures they they i'm telling you uh, listen they love it they love it i'm just telling you I, I, all I know is if I come home from um, I'm on vacation or whatever and I look out the backyard and this joker, this one here, is in my pool and there's dead birds floating around in the pool or a bird, I'm calling the police. I'm just letting you know I'm calling the police. Bless your heart. Hey, speaking of which, as we go to Peninsula Coach. Yes, you're great. Who, who would, great who would enjoy the pool as much as me if we were to cast a – a poll of Peninsula coaches. Who do you think would enjoy it as much as me? I can think of a lot, but I think this guy, if we're thinking on the right, right mindset, one of our favorites. Yeah. Cause he blesses a lot of people. He would, he would be pool. Now I'm not sure he'd be in the pool, especially with the dirty birds floating around. Um, but Mr. Tommy Riemann, who's coming back at it. And I'm so happy. Uh, that he's still got some stuff left in that tank. And more importantly, these kids are going to learn from a legend. Um, they're going to have to listen intently because he's got some sayings and and, and he, sometimes he talks quick. But um, he's come back on that sideline and he's going to be in a program that really does need some help. Um, it needs a whole lot of help. And there was even some Mike Tomlin mentioned and it's involved in this uh, put together. So Tommy Riemann is going to be with the Denby Patriots this year. And if I'm not mistaken, Matthew had a great chance to speak with Tommy. And you've got to listen close on this because he has some things to say that we can all learn from. As Steve Keller likes to say, pearls of wisdom. Let's give it a listen. All right, I'm here with the new head football coach of the Denby Patriots, Tommy Riemann, as his team is getting some work in with some other schools around the 757 as high school football season is almost here for 2023. Coach, we're getting ready to turn the calendar from July to August. And how's it feel to be back in? 
All right, we were frozen there for a second, so we're going to re- try to recalibrate that. Unfortunately, the uh, clip did not uh, load like we had hoped, so we'll we'll give this a second go of it. Take two, Ed. Let's see if we can get the Tommy Raymond interview up. Yeah, for we got to get Tommy. We don't have time for these technical All right. differences. All right, I'm here with the new head football coach of the Denby Patriots, Tommy Raymond, as his team is getting some work in with some other schools around the 757 as high school football season is almost here for 2023, Coach. We're getting ready to turn the calendar from July to August. And how's it feel to be back in some old yet familiar stomping grounds, if you will, here in Newport News, a place that you've had a lot of success in and a place you're pretty familiar with? Well, I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, it's interesting since you talked about history. Uh, Mike Tomlin, who finished, uh, graduated from DMB High School, I was in Pittsburgh at a funeral, a Franco Harris funeral, and uh, he asked me to take the job here at DMB and try to change the culture. Mm-hmm. And with that said, and remembering him even in 11th grade, now the head football coach is still, a, and now retired, I took it on and I said, why not? Yeah. And I tell you what, right now, we are not the same Denby, oh. if that's a different a connotation to, to, to say or use. These kids are working hard. They, they are introduced to some new events, just like today. Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 they're working hard and learning the game of football. Yeah, and you're taking over a rebuilding project, which you're used to doing that from your days at Warwick and Gloucester and even most recently Lansdowne. I mean, you've had different type of jobs. This one off a program that had maybe the, the hardest season of any in, in school history in, in Newport News. But you're competing well on defense. They're learning the fundamentals, the, the, the technique things that you and your staff are teaching. And then you have a young quarterback who's got a chance to be pretty special. You've had a lot of good ones, but tell me about Kevin Parker and what you like from him. Well, again, I have to. I'm a history guy. And Kevin Parker, ninth grade, um, he belongs in conversation right now mm-hmm. with the Michael Vicks, the Aaron Brooks, the Dontrell Leonard's, who's the head coach here today at Churchland, and Tommy Riemann Jr. Yeah. And so with those four names bouncing around, I think we're going to teach him. You can see today uh, he's going to be nice. One of the most impressive things to me watch him, and he's getting coaching not just from someone like you who's been a quarterback whisperer, but your son and Tommy Jr. Yeah. Tommy pulled him aside. He made a mistake. The next play, boom, he throws it on the rope and goes on the field. And, so uh, it seems like he's pretty receptive yeah, to coaching. He's yeah. got mobility as well. Yeah. Yes, he has, and he will, and we will continue to grow. Mm-hmm. And I'm just excited to be here. Uh, you know, I'm from Newport News. I was born and raised. I, I mean, so to help – culture here at Denby. I'm excited, you know, and so today was a showcase for these kids, you know, and, and I'm proud of everybody that came. Good more for you. You don't have to make as many trips across that tunnel, which can be a trip. As we know, going through the uh, HIBT and Mondra, good stuff for you. I don't know how you did it, for all this last year. Twelve straight years. Uh, any position unit or area, maybe a player to the, I mean, I don't know some of the names out here. Number 10 is out making hits. You've got number mm-hmm. five out here making plays. You've got a bunch of different kids yeah. that are stepping up. I don't yeah. know what grades they are, but it looks yeah. like you've got pretty good chemistry and some yeah. excitement. We have four seniors. Okay. I was at Delaware State uh, Saturday, Sunday with a couple of them. We have a lineman yeah. named uh, Caron. Uh, Addison, okay. offensive tackle, defensive tackle, uh, a player. He's a one double A player. And then um, Amir Robinson, he's an athlete. You know, he plays, the, he's going to play an, a position that's going to get his hands on the ball offensively. And he has great feet. And he showed that at Delaware State we, uh, Camp Weekend. And so that's the first offer uh, out of this, those four seniors. And the other kids, I've taken a couple of them to some, to some camp. So we're growing, yeah. you know, and, and, and the names of the guys, I'm waiting to, to learn them too in the same way the media would. But I'm so proud. And that's why I asked my children, former players who are head coaches, to have this event so that we can learn how to uh, – play with their level. That's awesome. We'll get you on this one. You know from your years in the peninsula, it's unforgiving. you got a reigning That's two-time right. state champion, Phoebus, Hampton's a story oh, program, yeah. Warwick, the list goes on and on. But, you know, mm-hmm. you're a veteran coach, so what's the goal year one? What do you, you don't set a bar of wins, I don't imagine. It's just mm-hmm. getting progress each week by week? Or? It has to be that. Okay. And just like today, it has to be that. Yeah. And that's where we're going. And so with that said, you know, I'm going to be very excited about it. Well, thank yeah. you so much. It was a blast being out here. We'll see you soon. You got it. God bless you. <laughs> All the so that was the one and only Tommy Riemann, Denby High School. I tell you what, Ed, Denby was so bad last year. If they win two or three games, they might have parade for him. And you know what? There's that enthusiasm that 
that can happen. And there's there are some pieces, and I'm seeing a little bit of a change over there at a place that's very hard to win. Are they on the same level of Phoebus and Warwick? No, not quite. Um, but that's probably said for everybody else in the district. They're not alone in that. No, I mean, and, and, and if you noticed, uh, Tommy blessed you after the interview, so you're good to go. Um, you know, you, you bring him back a storied coach in, in his old stomping grounds, um, and, and to have somebody, the, the nature of a Mike Tomlin say, hey, coach, you got to go back and help the old school out. That's, that means that's, that's yeah. amazing. That's really amazing. And for him to take it, you know, everybody in the world could want you, but does he have the energy? Does he have the for all to go ahead and build? It takes a lot more energy in coaching to build a program that sustain a program by far. Because when we, we talk about this change culture, clean out the culture, it's a lot of work involved. You, you really got to lay a standard and you can't waver in that standard. And, and you're going to have to upset a lot of people as you say goodbye to them because they can't be here because their way wasn't working. And now, you know, coach is there and we're going to get it done this way. If the enthusiasm stays there, and I'm talking about the players, enthusiasm, be focused in practice, um, run your stuff, do, do what you're supposed to do. They'll get a few, they'll get a couple wins this first year. Now, if it's just straight out talent versus talent, they don't have that with the other other teams in that that district have. So, and and Tommy and you all might made a good point. You really can't judge it on wins. They they could go winless this year and be way better than they were last year as winless. And people say, well, they didn't win a game, they didn't get better. So no, they can't. It just depends on how the coach's mindset is, is this where we need to be? We just couldn't get any wins. Now I firmly, firmly believe they're going to, I haven't really looked at their schedule hard enough to say, okay, here's a win. Here's a win. Here's a win. But off the top of my head, I, I can see them getting a couple wins, which would be big for them. Competing in the game, staying in the games is big. Playing well against the big boys, a Phoebus, a Warwick. Um, when, when they ever get that signature win, I always say this, when you get that signature win, you beat somebody you had no business beating, then you take off from there. Well, if you were paying attention to the ticker order that had the games coming up for next week and uh, across the 757, their first game is at Powhatan Field in Norfolk against Granby. Then they have the bye week. They host Heritage at John B. Todd Stadium in Newport News. Love that. John B. Todd. With, uh, shout out to our guy, Dominic Filardi, out there. And then they go to Gloucester, where Tommy once coached on September 15th. I'm going to tell you, by the time they play the Crabbers and the Wolverines and then the Waskley Walk Waiters, He's going to have a win. I don't know how many, but he's going to have at least one win. I'm going to give you that bold prediction. Yeah, I, you know, the first game. Let's just look at the first game, Granby. Um, you go Granby's ahead, respectable. Not, you go ahead and pick it. Go ahead. Granby's respectable. They're not They're not um, Maury like Taylor. Granby I'm grad Jerry Noel is not going to give you that purple tie and, and, and the spot on the bench now. He's going to, he's going to put the hex on you like Daryl or Maury. Yeah, go. I'm, I'm not going to say they're going to beat Granby, but you I just think that did. That game could be closer than you think, and and I'll well, say this: I think it is. Wait, wait. When you say closer than you think, well, how close do you know what I think? It's that's insinuating that you know you, what I think. You got you got Granby winning by twenty one. No, I don't. You haven't seen my prediction. Twenty eight. You're making an assumption. You know what they say when you assume, don't assume. True. Yeah. It can, it can make a uh, blank a donkey out of you and me. There you go. Well, I'll, I'll use the other word that you used earlier, but. Well, that, that too. Hey, we'll do our picks in a second, not for next week's games, but for the district and the players of the year. But before that, do you want to hear from two of the reigning region champs? Warwick won a region title, moving up to a class. Phoebus has won back-to-back -back state titles. Would you like to hear from Jeremy Blunt and Corey Harrison? And if so, who would you like to hear from first? Let's go. Yeah, let's hear from the coaches. I want to get more perspective on uh, how they feel about the district. Uh, let's go with Warwick coach, uh, Warwick coach Corey Harrison first. That's right. Ready, ready, as they call him. Let's hear from coach. I'm here with Warwick head football coach Corey Harrison after his Raiders won a preseason scrimmage at Cox High School in Virginia Beach by a count of 41-7. to seven. Coach, coming off a region championship last year for the first time at Warwick in a long time. I think you've been building this program where you all expect to be and hope to be a really good team. Now it's gone from we can be really good to now we know we can be really good. And tonight I think this showed uh, you're building in the right direction, continuing it here as you move up to Class 5 this year. Well, you know, again, it, 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 it all comes down to hard work. we got to keep working hard. We can't rest on what we did last season. It was a great season, but that season's in the past. We got to move on, um, and we we this is a different season. Even though we we do have a lot of stars returning, um, it's still not the same team. So, 
you know, with new team comes different challenges. So we just got to keep working and we can't rest on what happened last season. One of the players that pops every time you take the field is Messiah Delome. He was the region defensive player of the year. He makes plays for you offensively. He had a pick tonight, a uh, nice jet sweep run. Uh, just speak on what he brings your ball club on the field, off the field. And I know he's the total package as a prospect as well. Yeah, he he, he, he is he is a total package. Um, he can do it on both sides of the ball and on special teams. Um, but, you know, we also have a lot of a lot of kids that can do great things as well. So we can't just we, – we, just, we don't rest on only Messiah. Looks like you've got a nice mixture of run and pass. Tell me about just the pieces you have at those spots, the backs, the, the quarterbacks. Uh, I know Eduardo Rios is back for you at the Triggerman spot. And then even you, you got a tall receiver, you have a mixture of wideouts. So it feels like you've got versatility and balance on the offensive side of the ball to score points and move the ball. Right. Uh, but, but it all actually starts up front. Um, our guys up front, they've been working hard. We've been working them hard. And you, you, you can't complete a pass. You can't make a run if you don't have those big guys up front working and uh, – getting after it. So I, I, my hat's off to the offensive line. Um, we've had some challenges, some people go down, um, you know, but, you know, one thing I can say, they, 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 showed, they showed me today they can get it done. Well, you know, we always write about the ones that get their names in the paper, hear their names on TV, radio, internet, and read about it on the Twitter, the blogs, the skill guys. But tell us about some of those linemen, because Cox has a big time recruiting Gerard Johnson going to Virginia Tech defensive yeah. linemen. But shout out some of those offensive and defensive linemen, because not only did you block well, you collapsed the pocket too. Yeah, um, uh, Adonis Watson, he, he was a kid that was a uh, uh, district, uh, region, and state honors. He's returning at guard. We have another senior on the line, uh, Ryland uh, Woodard. Um, he, he's played for us for, uh, for five years, so he's really coming to his own on the offensive line. So those guys are out there communicating. They know the offense. And, again, the younger guys in tune of what we, what we need up front. And then defensively, I heard the name Skip with. I heard his name a lot tonight. I think he made some plays for you. Is that correct? Or was I hearing yeah, he, he made a couple plays Dwayne for Skip us. With? Is du it? Dewan Skip with. Dwayne Skip with. He made okay. some plays for us. He and uh, Chris Corbin uh, up, up from the D-line, they're, they're making plays. Um, you know, they were freshmen last year. So they, they're coming in with experience, and we, mm -hmm. they, they, again, they got to keep working. They're not yet there yet. A couple more for let you run. Uh, certainly, film will allow you and your coaches to have to evaluate more of the pluses, the minuses. But what's your initial takeaway here, as far as what you're like, and got to clean up and the progress from scrimmage one to now as you get ready for game one with Grassville coming up? Right. Uh, there, you know, there were three things I told the kids uh, before we came into the scrimmage. They were able to check two of the boxes. Uh, that third box, you know, we'll, we'll get after it in practice this upcoming week. Sure. And for Ward to have another special run in December, we know you're in a gauntlet of a region. You guys move yeah. into 5B where Maury has been in the state championship last two years. You've got Kings Forks, a very good team, Nansman River. Uh, Class 5 has always got a lot of teams even beyond just your region. G give me your thoughts and just the goals where I think these kids now, that winning culture is there. It's been instilled by you all. Right. But no matter what the culture is, no matter what, it's always going to be one game at a time. Yeah. Well, we always love hearing move the chains over at Ward High School in uh, <laughs> Todd right. Stadium, Darling Stadium. All the best. We'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. That was Corey Harrison of the work Raiders. Ed, they're going to be really good again, moving up from class four to class five. You say that's a huge step for them. But Messiah Delome, as Chris Berman would say, they like come and you want to go Delome. Like not in relation to Jake Delome. He's really, really uh, dynamic. And uh, I, I might do it again to you. I might steal a player to you right off the bat. Uh, no way. I'll wait. I'll wait. No, I'll yeah, wait. You can't, really you can't. It's my turn to go first. So you can't. Okay. Okay. Uh, your quick thoughts on the War Raiders before we hear from uh, Jeremy Blunt. We can actually save Blunt for after the picks, uh, but uh, you're, you're just take away from Warwick. And are you going to be daring enough? Are you going to be bold enough to pick Warwick, the Waskley Warwick Waiters, atop the Peninsula District ahead of Phoebus? No. You're not going to pay attention to the fact that they won their scrimmage 41 to 6 or something like that over Cox, whereas Phoebus lost 13 nothing to more. You don't overreact to those things? Like a lot of the social media say, butterflies say out again, there. Say again who Phoebus lost to in a scrimmage? Uh, Maury. Okay. And and who did Warwick beat in a scrimmage? Cox. Are you are okay. you saying that Cox is not in the same league as Maury? Um, yes. Wow, you just alienated everybody at Cox. Thanks a lot. No, I did. No, no, I you did. did. They're no, you they're did. good. They're not Maury good. Um so you're, no. are, you, are you, by that statement, even though this is Peninsula Talk, Crown, are you implying Maury's the best team in Tidewater, soup to nuts, hands down, not even close? Because I'll say that if you're not going to say it. When you, I keep thinking when you said 15 Division One players, I have to hurry up and think, does Phoebus have that? I think it's, it's to me, it's, it's down to Maury and Phoebus as the best in the 757. Agreed. So – 
you're splitting hairs if you're saying, well, no, I got to go Phoebus because of this, this, and this. No, I got, I got to go with Maury. There's a whole heck of a lot of really, really good teams right behind them. Okay. We're talking the best. Um, you know, we look at it. Th- I look at it this way. Phoebus, I could pick Phoebus as the best, and he may not win a state title. And maybe more he does, or vice versa, because it depends on different divisions. Yeah, the strength of the divisions. Correct. Sure. Warwick is moving up. I think Warwick is moving up to going into five. Five. I think eight, yeah. five is stronger. Warwick's going to probably run into more at some point. Right. And yeah. There we go. So no, and early question. I'm going Phoebus one more and Warwick two. Okay, so what's your three, four in the peninsula? Because I feel this is as big a gap as I've ever seen the peninsula after the top two. The gap from two to three is as wide as uh, uh, my backyard and my neighbor's pool. Pretty wide. That's yeah, pretty wide. Yeah. Um, and no, we're not talking a lot about our teams, but here again, even though they haven't set the world on fire here in the last couple of years, I'm going to slide Hampton in the number three. Woodrow Wilson's. Crabbers, you can't crush a crab, but you can eat them. You can eat them. I'm not a big crab eater, but I'm going. To, I'm a crab believer. I think they'll come back up a little bit. Kyle um, Watford, that quarterback, you, you're buying him. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to Hampton three, slight edge over um, Heritage. Uh, oh, you just four. disrespected your boy Jeff Super, former guy at Nansman River. Lost. Oh my God! Wait a minute. Time out. Yeah. Time out. I am a Jeff Super fan. How stupid uh, stupid of me, right? Yeah. He has done a great job at Kick It Tan. Let me, let me back it all the way up. Okay. Let me back it up. I'm going Kick It Tan three. Hampton, I'm sorry, I just dropped you one more to four. Newport News. I mean, um, Newport News. They're all Newport News. Heritage mm-hmm. goes number four. But I, I, I think Jeff's done a really good job at Kick It Tan. Don't think he has the athletes that Phoebus and Warwick have, but okay. he, you know, he, he, let's just put it this way. They're not going to lose a lot of many games, if any, on um, being out prepped, out ready, out coached. I, I don't see that. I think Jeff does a great job because he puts time and effort into it. Not that other coaches don't. Wow. I'm just saying that. I don't think he's that. I, I do worry about them losing David Anderson and Jakari Mazel, some of those guys that big were losses. big weapons for him. Um, I think there are some pieces in place, though, to, to make some noise. He did make a couple of subtle coaching staff changes. I know he's got I think Coach Ashley over there who was over at Tab on his staff now. Uh, I'm going to go Phoebus 1, Wart 2, hands in. I think 3 through 8 is just a mixture. Put them in a hat and pick them out. I'm going to go Heritage 3. I like Scott Woodley, the return he's, he has with Derek Gurley back at the trigger man spot. And I'm going to go Minchville 4. So they'll make me mad at – Kick it in and Hampton. I'll need some extra security or help from friends like uh, friends of ours like Shonda Billy and Eric Brown when I go to Hampton, and uh, maybe friends like uh, DJ Campbell at Kick it in so they don't get too mad at me. And then you'll need they're not going to give you any friendship at Kick at Heritage. You're not going to get any help from Dimitri Batten and Mike Garner. They're just going to charge you extra when you go to Heritage Summer League next year. That's all they're going to do. So there you go. yeah, I'm kind of used to that. Yeah. All right. And your player of the year, you get to go first now for offense or defense. Where are you going? Well. It's a done deal for defensive player of the year. Forget it. It is, I think. The, and yeah. the defense is mighty, mighty good. Are you going to take my guy? Yeah, the Messiah has to be number oh, are one. you really? Interesting. Okay. I'm You're taking DeLome. DeLome for defensive player of the year. Really good pick. Can, and I go for, can I go for defense now since you did that? I'm picking him as defensive player of the okay, year. I want to go defense now since you did that. I think DeLome okay. was wonderful. He could be either side of the ball player of the year. All right. Phoebus has the best defense in the 757 to me. Definitely they did last year in the state. And they bring back seven or eight starters, including a host of guys. I go through a list of them from the Keontae Gray and Rico Underwood in the secondary to Brendan Thompson at linebacker to Tri- uh, Tayshawn Stevenson, outside edge rusher, going to Old Dominion, all state. But the guy I'm going with is a future tur- future turtle, Anthony Reddick. 100 tackles, 21 sacks last year. I got to go with the best defensive guy on the best defensive team for defensive player. Here. That's nothing against DeLome. So you took that. I'll take a Phoebus defense that won't give up more than, I think, seven, eight points a game this year, and I'll let you go for offense now. Have fun with it. I have offense, um, Peninsula District known for offensive firepower. Um, I'm going to go with Phoebus. Give me – 
Going Keontae Gray, the, the weapon to beat the Jordan Bass 2.0 or try to be at least, which nobody yeah, would be. I, I, I got to so go with Gray. I'll easy. go with Gray. That's not a bad pick. Uh, I think a sneaky pick could be Victor Romain at Bethel if, if Bethel's offense gets churned or he has some big numbers. Uh, I like DeLome. I like Rajon Hammond at Warwick. I like Paul Stephen Davis, the Woodside transfer at Phoebus. Curly could even be in the mix there from Heritage, but I'm going to go with Rajon Hammond at Warwick, the running back he transferred from Woodside. I think he could get a lot of yards. There's such a focus on DeLome. I think Phoebus's weapons might be more split than you know the, the monster Jordan Bass had, so that's what I'll go with for that. So there you have it. And before we close up on the PD, we need to hear from the guy who's coming off back-to-back -back and has a great chance to win three in a row over there on Ireland Street, and they're mighty, mighty good, Ed, yet again. Always going to be on top there. I can't see anybody knocking him down. Let's hear what the man in charge for those Phoebus Phantoms, Jeremy Blunt, has to say about this year's squad. All right, I'm here with the head football coach of the reigning two-time state champion Phoebus Phantoms, Jeremy Blunt. His team uh, scrimmaging Salem here out of Virginia Beach. And, uh, Coach, coming off a historic year in terms of your defense being one of the best ever in VHSL history, how do you duplicate it? Well, it looks like this group might be up to the challenge. You guys were fast, physical, and played uh, with reckless abandon at times and looked great out here at times. You know, it's just about the little things, man. And one thing about this group that I'm really starting to fall in love with, man, these guys pay attention to those little things. You know, there were some gifted kids that graduated from this defense last year. So they got some big shoes to fill. And one thing I like is right now they're taking it day by day and just trying to get better. How do you keep a, a group that accomplished something historic like you did last year? And I know you did graduate some, some monster pieces like Jordan Bass, who's a two-way playmaker now at uh, Pittsburgh, Michael McMullen, and many others. How do you keep them motivated and inspired to go be as great as that group or maybe even better? How do you do that? Well, defense is a staple here, FIFA. So it's something that is culturally is just what we do. You know, so, hey, you're going to always have an opportunity to get out there and play lights out football. So when you're coming in, everybody's excited just from eighth grade moving on that, I understand you're going to have you want to be a part of the big brother program you know you're going to have to play to be tenacious and continue to work certainly cornerstones back for you like anthony reddick who's committed to maryland uh, tayshawn stevenson uh headed to old dominion and then you have some other players that we know a little bit about but are emerging as even bigger threats like brendan thompson who about took a kid's hit off on a hit today uh you know our, our seven we got seven guys that are that are returning starters you know brendan's returning he, he started the entire second half of the season so I mean, I foresee him that that tandem being an all-state tandem inside those two inside linebackers and those two ends, those two duos that you're talking about, and a host of other guys that rotate corners as well. You know, those two guys, both of them played lights out football last year as starters, and that's some safeties that's stepping in that's very experienced and understand how to um how to handle our system. Yeah, for those who know the other names, uh, Caleb Tillery, other inside backer for you, and tell us about some other returnees and new faces for you. I know on the secondary, it looked like Ricardo Pops Underwood's a name that's also continuing to get better and better for you. Absolutely. Pop and Keontae both started corner yeah. last year. Uh, you know, Brendan Thompson, Caleb Tillery, you know, they they all started. Tayshawn and, and, and Anthony, they started as well. Um, guys like Ike Lipkins. Isaac Lipkins, he played a lot for me last year, so that was good. And Noah Jefferson also played a whole lot. So you got guys like Deshaun Richardson who rotates in from interior to exterior. You know, he's a, he's another guy that has star power written all over him. Yeah, if you got versatility all over, and the effort seemed to be there every play for you. Offensively, it's always a question who's going to be the quarterback after Nolan James was was exceptional for you. Got hurt last game. You had uh, Jane Early fill in for him. What's that position looking like for you? Do you have multiple guys in the mix there? Well, right now we 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 held Trenton Mitchell out today, so you would have seen him get the start today if he were not held out. Um, um, then you have guys like Adonis Stowers and and our young guy Reek, you know. So we got a, we got three guys that can play for us and play you know high level football for us. So you know we're gonna keep the competition because that's what makes us better. But um, we'll be excited to get Trent back come next week. Jordan Bass scored so many touchdowns I lost count last year, but you have guys that can be home run hitters. It feels like at the receiver and back spots specifically today. It looked like Keontae Graven about older brother Kamari being a standout for your program, and uh, Paul Stephen Davis, newcomer for you, who's got a lot of potential as well. Absolutely. You know, we got some guys that we can get the ball to out in space and they can make things happen. You know, our backfield with Davion Roberts and Dior Hatchet and um, my young guy, Tay, you know, those guys, we'll, we'll have a host of guys that we can throw at you. But expecting some big things from Davion um, coming behind that offensive line. My favorite moment of the scrimmage for you guys was just your entire camaraderie of the sideline players and coach staff. Was it was Jashik, some of the young men that had the interception for Jashik you. Cones. Yeah, yeah Jashik Cones. I mean, just Cones, see that little man. guy can step up and make a big play. Your whole group got so thrilled for him. He's a disciplined kid, man. You know, he does. He's exactly where he needs to be. Um, I coach the defensive back. So when you see those guys 
do their jobs and do it well. You know, that's why everybody was so excited to see him get that opportunity. Yeah, you got a long list of guys going back to the days of Gregory and Charity, Latrell Smith, and so many others, countless guys. A couple more lectures around here, Coach. One of the positions that often gets forgotten about in football, and we only highlight them if there's making mistakes, that's the offensive line. You bring back the whole unit, do you not? Yeah, we do. We do. We bring back the whole, the entire offensive unit. Um, Emory Durso set out today for us. We're just going to rest him up, continue to allow him to get stronger. Um, but, you know, we got, got a good host of guys, you know, that – we're looking forward to what we can do up front, man. That makes it all possible for you to do what you do, does it not? Cannot do it without those guys up front. They're the unsung heroes, but in our in our community, man, I'll tell you what, we sing their praises very loud. There's a lot of great programs in the state. Phoebus has a long tradition. Uh, you played it. You've coached it now. You move up from class three to class four. Tell me about what that has in front of you and how excited these guys, these guys are to keep that legacy going, the beat going on, if you will, trying to get a three-peat and do what they can uh, do as far as maximizing their potential and days in a Phoebus uniform? I mean, it's always fun when you can talk about new challenges, man. You know, so you get an opportunity to move up to Division Four. some new challenges in the sense of you got guys that we haven't seen, and that'll be good for us. You know, our district's going to get us prepared for those moments, you know, and then we get into the playoffs, man, take it one game at a time. So, you know, we just want to do something special, man. You get an opportunity to say Division Five champs, Division Three champs, now we're moving up to four. You know, you want to be able to capitalize on opportunities like that. So we love the challenge right now. But we're not looking to December. Right now, we're just trying to take care of the day-by-day -day process. Because if you do, you get you don't enjoy this process a little bit too, right? Oh, you man, you grow complacent when yeah. you start looking too far ahead. Yeah, well, it should be another fun-filled year for Jeremy Blunt's Phoebus Phantoms. All the best, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much, man. So that was Jeremy Blunt as the Phoebus Phantoms look to be another really strong state championship-level team here as we – Put a bow on this Peninsula District preview of our high school football preview for 2023. Ed, uh, there's a lot to like. You know, Nolan James, the quarterback, who I know you had the pleasure of, well, he was in your building at Nance River, but uh, interview in December uh, after he had the injury and, you know, his teammates brought him out there. You know, Jaden Early came in to back up. And now you've got Trent Mitchell stepping in at quarterback. They got a capable backup in Adonis Stowers who came in from Gloucester. It feels like the, the guy that's at that spot is just going to be fine. They will run the ball. They will defend. They will hit you in the mouth. And their physicality, it's its an old school like Phoebus from the mid-late 2000s when they had it under the late great Bill D and Stan Sexton. And kudos to the job Jeremy Blunt's done because I think, speaking to a lot of coaches around the state, he's getting as much credit and praise as far as his, his coaching acumen just growing and growing and growing these last few years, talking to coaches that have had to prepare and game plan and watch them on film. It's just about any coach I've – uh, heard from about in the 757. So when your peers start to give you that kind of praise, you know this from the basketball side of things, that means an awful lot. Absolutely, because the coaches, who better than a coach to know what you have to go through, what you have to do to be among the best? We all know the number one prerequisite is talent in any sport. You got to have talent. The bottom line, any level, any sport, you got to have talent. Then you got to have talent that wants to work. And you got to have your best players are your hardest workers. Those that's when things really start working well. That's why you see a lot of recruiting um, that goes on. First of all, in the college level, it's how all programs and all sports are built. Colleges go out, they recruit high school for the most part, recruit high school athletes. And of course, in today's world now, they can recruit college athletes out of the portal. High school is not really supposed to be that way. You take what's in the zone, comes in your door, and you do some with it. But we all know that it's call what it is. That's not true. There's some programs that are predicated strictly on recruiting. And sometimes it's a coach that may not be well-versed in the coaching acronym, so he just goes out and he's a good recruiter. He's able to somehow weasel diesel kids into the uh, program. That's just what it is. But I think Jeremy def definitely gets his accolades. You can't be where he's at as long as he's been as, as good as they are and not give the head coach any credit. You can't. I know when somebody comes in new, the people say, well, he's one with so-and-so's so players. Well, that could be said maybe for a year, possibly two. After that, it's it's the coach that's there and the players that he's done. He just has a, They have a great system, and the way they play works very well. Until And why would he change it? Make somebody else change it. You don't change it yourself. So they'll be there. And and I think going into this year, um, they have a great, great, great shot of winning another state title. 
Game one, September 1st in Chesapeake at Oscar Smith. It's the rubber match, if you will, because remember, they got tattooed a couple of years ago. They walloped the Tigers back at Darling Stadium last year, and a uh, winner will certainly be feeling mighty good about themselves. Of course, in Oscar Smith's case, they got some business to take care of first with a trip to Hermitage in Richmond coming up next week. Well, we're going to take one final commercial break, then we'll finish up with some Bay Rivers District, the uh, privates, and you'll hear from another coach representing the Commonwealth with an out-of-state matchup coming up next week before our next episode of the podcast, and that's Lauren Johnson of the Highland Springs Springers as the five-time state champs move up to Class 6. We'll be taking on his alma mater in Florida. Hatfield and Young at the Plex, 757 Sports Talk style, and we've got more sponsors. You can always get involved with us. Drop us a note. Get in touch with us at the Sports Plex. Like, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share it. And you can be one of the many partners. We'll be giving out players of the week. We've got all kinds of neat things and gadgets and gizmos aplenty, all kinds of things in, in the works. But let's hear from another one of our sponsors, CHKD Sports Medicine. At CHKD, sports medicine is more than just treating injuries. It's a whole team approach to caring for young athletes. With experienced physicians, surgeons, trainers, and rehab specialists here when kids and teens need them most. Our experts help young athletes prevent injuries, too, with advanced training and conditioning programs that keep them in the game safely. CHKD Sports Medicine, where kids are more than patients and we're more than a hospital. Wait, hold up. DQ put fries and onion rings in a chicken strip basket? I mean, you got fries and onion rings together. Is this for real? Oh, yeah, I just got really real. DQ, happy tastes good. And now back to Matthew Hefew and the evil basketball coach. Blast you and young! Back to Matthew Hefew and the evil basketball coach. Blast you and young! Oh good, you gotta run it twice. Every time I hear that, I look around the corner and see that little uh, dude is there with one of his laser guns or one of the other gadgets he always had on that show pointed that's at me. Favorite, that's one of your favorite shows, people don't know. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it's not a kid show. It's an adult show, and uh, it's, it's going to be one of my all-time favorites. Thanks to CHKD and Dairy Queen, where it's fan food, not fast food, helping present this edition of the 2023 High School Football Preview with us here from the Hometown Sports Productions Group. And uh, many thanks to Chuck Thornton, Nick Senti, Dennis McEwen, and the entire team for allowing us to do this with you each and every week. We'll have all kinds of episodes archived, uh, interviews, guests, a chance for you to interact with us and call into the show as we move along as well, Ed. But let's give the... Uh, Bay Rivers District, a real quick one through four and some shine because we're running short on some of our time. Uh, shine time, another one of our sponsors, by the way. See what I did there? A little shout out to them. Uh, Bay Rivers, one through four. It feels like you go with Andy Lynn, who's just a couple years removed from the state championship in that COVID shortened year, but Warhill's been building. They're very sneaky, very senior heavy group led by Liam Francisque, Taylor Eady. Got a couple of kids coming to Delaware State and North Dakota State. Jaden McAdoo run the ball well for them. You can never count out our good buddy, Doug Pereira, Blue Smoke. Doug Pereira at York gets it done, Coach P. And then uh, some new coaches across the district, John Byron at Tab. You have uh, Grafton, which has the co-coaches situation again with Max Bolton and Creighton Incrominius. They showed some promise at times last year. And Pocosin, which looks to be a Class 2 contender under Coach Elliot Duty. Uh, the Islanders will be tough to deal with as far as running the ball, stopping the run, a lot of experienced linemen. Uh, the Bay Rivers is starting to close the gap. It used to be viewed and snickered at compared to other districts in the 757, but not so much anymore. Yeah, I, Lafayette, Warhill compete probably well in almost every district, all, all of the districts. Um, Pocosin and York, not quite the athletes that those other ones have, but at their level, very good. They're right there. And and I would start right with those four teams and, and my selection of Bay Rivers going with Lafayette, War Hill, York, Pocosin, uh, one through four. What I, I feel cringy about is where is Smithfield? Okay, tell me something about Smithfield and my, my guy, Tracy Parker. 
Well, Tracy Parker's got some athletes over there. I think the question is going to be about depth for them, and they're going to probably beat one of those top four, but I don't know that I would put them in the top four. I have the same four, but in a little different order. I got Lafayette one, Warhill two. Would be tempted to go Warhill ahead of them, but that memory of what happened last year when Lafayette just manhandled them is fresh in my brain. Uh, I'm going to go Pocosin three and York four, but if you tell me a Grafton, if you tell me a Smithfield beats one of those three or four seeds, it will not surprise me in the least bit because, as we know, the Bay Rivers can produce some of those 36, 34, 42, 41, or even if it's lower scoring, 15, 14 white knuckler type of contests on a Thursday or a Friday night that uh, has people talking about it uh, on the weekend. Yeah, I think they've, they've set themselves up over the years for those amazing last-second finishes or a big spurt somewhere in the game that that does happen. But, uh, yeah, I'm hoping my guy, Tracy Parker, uh, I think, what, his second year now at Smithfield will show mm-hmm. some even more progress as to as what they did last year. And it, and it might be these situations where it's not that they're bad. It's just, like you said, those in front of them have a little bit more to work with. And there's nothing wrong with that because – that's just the way it is. They just got a little bit better personnel, whatever. But again, depends on how you get your season started. You get a key win here or there, knock one of those four up. Pretty soon you're playing for that district title. But I really do think, again, in this one, Lafayette Warhill, that much ahead of uh, whoever three and four is. And I know I had York and you had Pocosin, but I think there's a big gap between two and three. Well, and at Norview and at Church and for Smithfield out of the district, uh, out of the shoot before they get to district play with a bye week and then hosting Jamestown after that. So that will tell us a lot. Now, offensive player to year, defensive player to year. Who goes first for this? Do I get to get the first choice on this? Yes, I got to I got to defer to you. You get to go first. Oh, boy, I get to go first. I like this. All right. Well, I got a lot of different choices. I'm, I'm perusing from Bruton Wideout, Brandon Freeman to the Lafayette's quartet of James Spencer, Elijah Matthews, Peter Cook and Eric Zeladon. Uh, Pocosin's got a QB, DB, and Eli Tindall. Baker Green, the running back. Chase Bullard was a first-team All-State state guy on defense utility. Warhill's got a host of guys with Liam Francis, Talon Edie, Jaden McAdoo, as I mentioned. And then York's got a big D tackle I like a lot in the junior 6'2", 275. Xavier Ransom, who could be poised for a breakout year. I'm going to go with... Francisk for Warhill because I think he's going to handle the ball a lot now at quarterback, run it some, and he'll be my choice for player of the year, although McAdoo is a very tempting one, and you can go with any back from Lafayette or Pocosin, the way they run the ball generally effectively. So I'll go with Liam Francisk. Uh Let's get the job done. All right. Um, For my defensive player of the year, since I'm going first on that, I'm going to stay with you, but I'm going to put him on the other side of the ball. Who's that? Francisc. Oh, you're going to take my guy on defense. Okay. As defensive player here, I can't take him on offense now because you took him, but okay. I will take him on the defensive side. Right. And my offensive player of the year, I've got to have to look at Lafayette. i got to look at a running back. Therefore, I'm looking at James Spencer. That's not a bad pick. I'm going to go with his teammate, Elijah Matthews, for my defensive pick. He was second-team all-region at defensive back last year. They had to replace Jalen Pretlow, who was a big-time weapon for them, wide receiver, defensive back, special teams, jack-of-all-trades. You can see Matthews getting his mitts on about six or seven picks and maybe running a couple back for scores. I think it's pretty wide open. Bullard's not a bad choice from Pocosin either here for the BRD. P-O-Y. Give the private schools a little quick shout out. We love doing some of the Atlantic Shores games, and we hope to do a couple of them this year. Nathaniel McDonald's a big time stud for them. William and Mary commit 95 tackles, 47 for loss, 24 sacks a season ago. We know Coach Lance, who we love, he'll throw the bomb for you on fourth and one, Ed, which I know you love. He's got his son at quarterback this year. Curious to see how his development continues to take shape in front of our eyes this year. Remember, he had one of our favorite interviews last year on radio in Caden B, the big defensive tackle who's now at Kent State. The Golden Flashes in the MAC, uh, alma mater of our guy Rod Johnson, by the way. So they got a great one there in Caden Beatty. Uh, and then a couple more private school guys to watch out for. There's a bunch of them. But uh, Isaiah Furman, basketball kid from Nansman Suffolk Academy, who last year at wide receiver had 57 catches, 1,217 yards, 18 touchdowns. He's really focused on football and will have a huge year for Mike Beal's Saints of NSA. And then Zaheer Griffith, the Navy commit from Norfolk Academy, who had 23 tackles and seven pass breakups last year. A lot of uh, private school ballers to keep an eye out for this year, and I think there will be some compelling matchups across the area with those teams, and especially with the, with the Seahawks uh, hosting many of them at the Plex. And Catholic High's got some guys to watch out for, too. Yeah, again, let's not diminish to the private schools. You know? 
we understand a lot of times those are the smaller schools. Sometimes depth is an issue with those schools, and you, you'll see their top athletes never leaving the field. There's offense, defense, and special teams because it necessitates that at that level when you don't have a whole lot of, uh, to pick from. And there's a lot of those private schools that I'd love to see some matchups with some of the public schools because I think uh, you would see some tremendous battles. So uh, it, it's all out there, and and I, I echo your sentiments. I hope maybe we can do um, – uh, some some Atlantic Shores game since uh, we're going to be stationed out of the Plex for this podcast, which, again, hats off to those guys for thinking of us and, and wanting to bring us in. And uh, we're still – I keep saying we've done – this our second show, but it's not our major debut show yet. That's coming at a different time when we're going to have some bells and whistles and all that stuff. But um, uh, we're, we're pleased with that, and maybe we can do uh, some Atlantic Shore games. Yeah, it's always fun to call some games, whether it's a public school, private school. We don't care who it is and what teams they are. We just want good football action, and we love we love all the sports going on there at Deplex, whether it be football, soccer, field hockey, lacrosse, you name it. A great bunch of activities happening on a regular basis over there. We've got one more coaching interview to hear from Ed, and it's the guy who's won not one, not two, not three, not four, not LeBron James, but the guy who leads the Springers of HSHS. Coach Lauren Johnson, Highland Springs. Let's see what he's got to say with uh, another fine edition of the Springers. Yeah, former teammate of our guy, Dwight Vicks at Virginia Tech with the Hokies. He's got his son, uh, Braylon Johnson, playing for Virginia Tech now. He also talks about Brennan Johnson's returning son. Let's give that a listen. I'm here with the head football coach of the Highland Springs Springers in his 16th season at the helm, Lauren Johnson, coming off his fifth state championship. Well, Coach, how do you and the Johnson family celebrate the uh, latest championship in offseason slash summer, if you will, because it goes by fast, doesn't it? It does go by fast, and it wasn't much celebration after the game itself. Uh, I mean, you smile a little bit, you hang out with your family, you get back to the house, man, and, and uh, most people can tell you, I was in the grocery store buying groceries after the game. My wife needed me to run some errands, so that takes precedent over everything. Uh, so we just, you know, we just enjoy it. We relish it for a short period of time. And then back in the month of January, man, we're back at work. Yeah, there's honey do list pile up when you're in the middle of a football grind in season. Well, one Johnson young man is at Virginia Tech here on the mater. The other one is the reigning defensive player here in the state, class five. You guys have built the class six in a Brennan Johnson, number 11 out here. Special young man and one of the cornerstones for your defense that made a lot of plays out here today. Yeah, I mean, I, Brennan goes without saying. He's been a football player. And, and when I say a football player, he's played football his entire life. And guys that do that, they learn a little bit about the game. But I think what he has to his benefit is that we're at the house, we have conversation, uh, even though it's not a bunch of conversation, but it just kind of teaches him what to do. So he's seen it. You know, he's been in the, in, in the huddle with us for a long time. He was a ball boy. He's been around football. He understands it, and it, it translates to the field for us a lot. Yeah, I made the comment last year. I think it was your Martinsburg game. I watched the film that he was maybe the most impressive linebacker I saw as a 10th grader. Nickname is it Peanut? Did I hear yeah, that right? Yeah. How'd that come about? Uh, he's just born small. You know what I mean? So being born small, we gave him that nickname very early. Uh, the irony behind it, man, he's allergic to peanuts. So he's got a <laughs> nickname that, that, that fits him all the way around really, really well. A lot of other established players, whether it be Christian Martin, Noah Jenkins, George Lovelace, Ja'Kari Henley. Um, what are you seeing on them? I notice a lot more vocal communication and leadership out of them as they get ready for, I think, seniors, if you will, right? Yeah. I mean, them guys are doing everything that we ask them to do. They know that it takes a senior group that's very, very dedicated and very, very vocal and very, very, um, what's the best way to put it, in charge of what's going on, right? They can be Coach Johnson when Coach Johnson is not there. That in itself works wonders and it's tremendous and very valuable to our football program so guys those guys are doing what we ask them to do they've started back in january and that's translating to the field defense has controlled this early on and you've had a scrimmage relationship with kevin tucker and thomas dell that goes back a lot of years when you went to your up tempo sort of no huddle hurry up offense it was quick strike offense which has been your calling card and what you've had a lot of success with is that something you feel like you can lean on in pressure spot throughout the year i mean it's just one of those things it's just an attribute of what we're going to do play calling wise uh, sometimes you got to get guys going. It's an early start today. Uh, we usually don't practice early in the morning, but you make no excuses, man. Guys just got to be prepared and ready to go. And, and, and doing that up-tempo time, which is just, just calling plays that we're going to call when the season starts. Uh, early on, it was a lot of script stuff. You know what I mean? Maybe some stuff that we wanted to see to see if kids can get moving. 
but it just kind of evened itself out, and I thought we played a, a great first half, and it let the second guys get in the second half. Yeah, a couple of guys that found the ends, and I'm not that well versed in uh, Dewan Green, Jamon Lewis. So are you feel like you're getting some others, even if they're not twos, players that are complementary pieces to your main stage, your game breakers, your playmakers, to get more comfortable. I mean, those guys have been around our program, you know, for three years. You know, but it's like anything else, Alice Springs. You got to just take the time, right? You can't be the guy to walk in immediately. There's not many guys that do that in our program. Uh, since I've been here, it's only been two freshmen, if I can think of, that have been starters from the day that they walked in. DJ Johnson, who played quarterback for me, and Brennan Johnson. <laughs> you know, so everybody else has to wait a little bit and develop. And those guys have been around. They know what to do. They know how to function. They know how to play. You know what I mean? And they got their opportunity to show us today what they're going to do and what they can bring to the table. A couple more lectures on. Appreciate the time. Yeah, certainly, film will tell you a lot as you and your coaches have to evaluate the uh, things that went well, didn't go well. But sort of initial blush, if you will, of what you liked, what you have to clean up here as you get ready for a big game one. You're on the modern Miramar from Florida. Yeah, I, I know we got to clean up just, just about every, every aspect of the game. We're nowhere near ready to play right now, but I'm glad we don't have to play right now, right? So – Everything's going to be polished. Everything's going to be cleaned up. You know, you're talking about from snap count uh, to substitutions. You know, we're trying to sub early and often right now. You know, you're going to be in South Florida. You might be a little, it might be hot, right? You got to get some guys in. So we have to mix those guys in and get them ready to go. So there are a ton of things that we have to do. Uh, if I go through the list, we'll be here for hours. But but I'm, I'm satisfied with what we did today, how we played, and the things that we can do to make ourselves better. Uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, man, I'm excited about what we have. I, I know what we have. You don't want to show your hand, especially to somebody that you could possibly be playing later in, the, in, in, in down the road. So, so we got some things to work on. Well, let's finish up on that. You go into a new region after winning the state championship five times in AAA or Division Five, if you will. Now you're in Division Six with maybe the toughest region in the state with you guys at Highland Springs, Manchester, who you see in Game Two, Thomas Dale, Oscar Smith, and Western Branch from the seven five seven. Your schedule. People say they play the toughest schedule. Well, you guys year after year, it shows. I mean, you've got Maury on it this year, who played in the Class Five state final. Tell me about just that opener going back. I know you'll be excited with Miramar and what this will do as you try to accomplish even more history at Highland Springs. I think the biggest thing for us, man, is going back to what Richard McPhee did when he was in at, at Huguenot. Getting on the road, giving kids opportunities to kind of expand their horizon, uh, play some different teams, represent the state as best that we possibly can. Um, you know, it, kind of, it does matter to me. Um, the entire state of Virginia is important in terms of our, our development as coaches, in terms of how players represent themselves when they're in college. Like, for, for guys to be able to come back and recruit our area, like, guys got to go and, and showcase their talent like in different places. So that's very important to me uh, in terms of how we maneuver ourselves through our schedule. Our schedule is tough, but I always learn from Coach Beamer. You know, you create a sense of urgency when you play tough teams early on, but it also tells you where you are and it also helps you improve. I was on a team at, at Virginia Tech that went 0-2 and won 10 in a row. Nobody even talks about those first two. They talk about the last 10. So I think those things are important. Uh, going undefeated always seems to be the goal for people in high school football. That's not the goal for me. It's, it's icing on the cake. You've been about two tons out of your fight? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's icing on the cake. But the ultimate goal is the ultimate goal, right? So we're working towards that. So I, I don't get caught up in the hoop law. I don't get caught up in, you know, guys beating the chest, man, when they, you know, they score a touchdown or something, anything like that. Uh, I just kind of want to focus on the game and the development of a player and how we get them to the next level to be successful in everything that we do. Well, thank you so much. Keep doing what you're doing with young men, molding them, developing them, and uh, we look forward to the journey on the uh, road to maybe December again. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks. Highland Springs coach Lauren Johnson, Ed, who's won five state championships, and I have the feeling it's not going to end at that number. Uh, I know the ticker has been showing earlier, which you will probably dispute now as we pull it back up here for the Classics Top 10. We actually have them second to Freedom of Woodbridge. South County follows. Then you got Manchester, Madison, Thomas Dale, Oscar Smith, Western Branch, Battlefield, and Fairfax. Now, last year, I did have the Springers won before the season in Class 5, uh, ahead of Stonebridge who had won it, and ahead of Maury and Green Run, and they did win the state championship. Uh, and they have a great chance to get it done, but you see why they're so good. This guy is wired differently. He gets it. Sure, they have awesome athletes at Highland Springs, but the amount of kids he produces to the next level and the impact he has as a leader of young men, 
I mean, you just you hear him speak for five, ten minutes, like watch his motivational speak. It's like you're watching Ray Lewis almost to a degree. You get you get ready to go run and like, you know, go do some sprints or go pick up a loaf of bread at the grocery store. He gets you inspired when you hear him talk. He does. Yeah, he does. I mean, he's he's at the helm of, of one of the world class teams in the state. And many, many times people say, well, that's because he picks up transfers here and there. But he wants to play for Highland Springs. And no, but he puts that ship together. They develop. They, yeah. yeah, they he, he gets those players better. He takes them to another level. Um, and if I heard correctly, and do you have his schedule in front of you? Uh, I do. He plays Miramar, his alma mater from Florida. He then plays Manchester who's won a state championship before, has a really good team It's in his region. By the way, he scrimmaged Thomas Dale, who's now in his region. And then he's got uh, game three. Guess who that is? That's the Maury Commodores in Norfolk, Palatan Field, a rematch of last year's Class 5 final. By the way, Dinwiddie also plays Maury this year. So a couple of 804 teams taking on the Commodores. And the very best, the, the schedule is so front-loaded with massive games this year out of the gate. It's incredible that you have so many monster matchups before even, you know, October. And I think Highland Springs is just going to get better and better from it. Their quarterback who's going to Maryland, Christian Martin, was near flawless last year. He's There's not a real glaring weakness for this team. Even if you think, like, their twos or their seconds aren't as great as their first, well, have fun beating those guys because they can beat a lot of people's firsts, okay? Yeah, and, and you know, I agree with what Coach mentioned about scheduling the toughest. I, Many have heard my philosophy on scheduling, and, and it's not the same as everybody. When you when you have a powerhouse team, I think you play a good handful of powerhouse teams, and then you might play one or two average teams just to give you the so-called breather a little bit or go deep into your roster to play some kids. Because it's hard to play a whole roster against powerhouse teams, and, and, they're, and kids are second and third string for a reason. But <clears throat> he has that type of team, and he's going to go play that type of schedule plus what he has to play, obviously, in his district because that's what he has to play to get them ready. I don't think you play pop a schedule like that if you're just an average team. and You're flirting with death on a schedule because the next thing after talent, what, what uh, preludes in terms of winning is scheduling. How you schedule, if what, what you're allowed to schedule, and then how you play teams and what kind of an order predicates your idea on winning. Highland Springs has the athletes. They have a tough schedule. They have a coach that's really, really deep in preparation. They've got a huge coaching staff. Um, I remember back to the days in basketball with with our fellow uh, George Lancaster. Lancaster. Yeah. When the team would come out before the team came, this is basketball. There would be about nine coaches come out first. <laughs> and I used to say, <clears throat> "Is that the football staff, or is that does each kid have their own coach?" But that's how he ran things, and they were they were to a T and everything they've done, and they they too were a high class program. So, you know, you can have some pretty good athletes. Doesn't mean you're always going to be a big winner. Highland Springs has good athletes, and they've always been a big winner. They really have been. Well, Ed, this has been a lot of fun. We've gone almost three hours here, going through all kinds of high school football action across the seven five seven and beyond teams to get you ready for the season. I'm ready for it. I know you are because your baseball season is about done with the Yankees just stinking up the joint. My team's probably not going to make the playoffs either. So we'll do it again next week with games already in the books, and we'll go through scores. It'll be like old fun times again, and we'll probably be in the Plex Studios for that episode. Yeah, and, and again, I say to everybody, um, you know, this is a new venture for us. We're excited about it. Those wanted a high school f- football fix. Boy, this show gives it to you, as you said, over over two and a half hours. Hopefully people can get through it. But it's a lot of information. And as I said, I don't know any people that do their prep work like Matt does and, and get a lot of depth in people. And again, we're not here to please everybody. Let me just make that loud and clear. We're not here to please everybody. We can't mention every name. We can't pick everybody first. We're yeah. going to make probably more mistakes than not. And that's why we have the show. When we have the capabilities, you can call in. Let's call in. Let's debate yep. it. Let's let's talk. Send the email to Matt. We'll put it out on. We don't mind being called out. Uh, we, we have no problem with that. We're not always correct. We have opinion. And that is just what it is at times, opinion. Now, sometimes I have opinionated fact, and that is real. But that's on me. But mm-hmm. sponsorship, people. If you know people that, that have a business, I don't care how small, I don't care how big, Get in here. 
help sponsors. We can make it personal for you. As I said last week, maybe our pick statement, you can sponsor the pick statement, player of the week, um, those type of things. We can have a sponsor, and then we're going to try to make it personal. We might even have a sponsor come on with us to talk sure. about things. So we, we, we can do some things with this, but the bottom line is if we don't have sponsorship, pretty much like any league, professional league or whatever, if you don't have money behind you, you can't do a lot. And, and for us to keep this going, we're going to need that. There's so much we can do with this uh, platform, and we're so excited with it and very thankful, we, but we need that help. So please send those sponsors our way. I've had a couple people contact me this week. Uh, I was thrilled with it. We're going to get them in contact with the right people. And, and, and tell Chuck and them, and I know I probably shouldn't say this, but they already know I'm going to say stuff I shouldn't. If you don't like their sponsorship package, then tell Chuck, Look, Ed Young said you can go get me in and we got to work this out. We're not walking away from the table. We're going to work this out. We're going to get you in one way or the other. So uh, please join us because I really believe down the road, this is going to be bigger and better than ever. And it's going to really branch out in some really nice things. So get in on the ground level now, because later on, we ain't taking no bandwagon jumpers. That's right. The connection and interaction is uh, limitless for you. You can hit us up on Twitter at 757 Sports Talk. Log on to vbsportsplex.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at Virginia Beach Sports Plex. Also share it, like it, subscribe to it to get notifications of all of our broadcasts when we go live and see archive episodes, archive broadcasts of games, be it football, soccer, lacrosse, uh, so much more. Uh, field hockey too. It's all up there for you all to peruse. And Ed Young will soon have his GoFundMe and Cash App up there to give any donations his way because he'll take those any chance he can. And we can drop this little little teaser out here as we close up this show because we forgot to last episode. Ed Young has promised me, ladies and gents, he is going to get a Twitter. So there is the breaking news. That's Coach gonna, Ed Young is about to get a Twitter. That's going to happen on one of these shows. I can't tell you which one. But I'm going to Twitter finally after years of being uh, of saying I'm not going to do it and Hatfield all over me for not doing it and get up to date with the uh, 2020s and all that. I'm going to do it. And I may do some other things that will shock the world on here. And I got to be careful because we're on live now. You can see some things going on. So I have to be careful. But I'm going to do some things that are going to shock a lot of people. See, it's up there. You agree to get a Twitter. It's out yes, there. You can't that. take it back. It's going to happen. How about that? And Matt's agreed to get a tattoo. So no, no, no. That's not coming up on the screen, and that's not going to happen. Have not yeah, agreed I knew he'd back out. See, people, I'm the daring one that takes chances. Uh, and then this Mr. guy Hattie. here, let's see, which one is he at? He's over there, yeah. Mr. This Hattie, guy Mr. here. Mr. Hatfield okay. would take me out of the will and disapprove, so I don't think that's going to fly at, at this stage. Unbelievable. This is and, this. and the late Sam Hatfield, my grandfather, would probably be rolling in his grave with that happening. So, but uh, guess what, Ed? It's we're out of time because uh, we just.